Alright, let me know if you guys can hear me. Hopefully it's not too loud. I think my microphone's going to be a little closer to my face than normal. But let's get started. Alright. Um, let's sit this one. Maybe we should studio mode this. Alright. Boom. Here we are. A little bit of a different setup. What's up, Bodo? What's up, Hamad? And Silverio? Thanks, guys, for joining in. Thanks for waiting a little bit. All right, we are good to go. And yes, so today we are doing a samurai speed run. Yay. <laughs> it's actually been a little bit since we've done one of these. And I have the samurai version three here. But we're not folding this guy today. We're doing the Samurai version 4. I just kind of have him here as reference and for something to show. And I got to say, this I haven't seen my Samurai version 3 because it was packed away for a little while. And after making the Samurai version 4, I think it's quite, quite a bit better than this one. So I'm excited for y'all to see it. You won't see the finished model today probably. But uh, I'll be debuting it at the Oregon USA convention. So you'll see both the first fold and this one there. Uh, I'm doing two because I plan to sell one of them, or at least list it for sale. I, I don't think it'll actually sell, but uh, I'll list it for sale. Just kind of to draw some buzz. Um, this is a uh, marketing strats right here. But yeah, let's get started because we are going to be here for quite a little while I think and a hey, yes yes you are a monkey I, I know you thanks for also being a YouTube member I was meaning to get membership badges before this stream but I ran out of time so sorry if there's no new badges yet but pretty soon we'll have some new membership badges and I'll be pretty lit let's move the samurai out of the way so Basically, before the Origami USA convention, um, I had... Okay, um, so yeah, nice thing, nice thing about YouTube is I can stop streaming but keep the broadcast open so i think i think we're back are we back guys is it uh is it working um if i move my hand around on my end i can see myself um but i basically i was i downscaled the output because it was uh like 2500 by 1400 and it was i think that's too much for my internet <laughs> to handle so I, I downscaled it to 1920 by 1080 the uh ethernet doesn't work as well here as in my other place we're back okay sick looks better i think the camera might be a little glitchy over time but i think we won't lose any frames here or it won't lag Looks fine. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Thanks for letting me know, though. That really helps because uh, it's hard to tell on my end. But yeah, let me know if there's any other stuff going on. And then um, let's get back to pre-creasing. Okay, so we're doing the sword right now. Uh, I forget what I was talking about earlier, but um, that's okay. <laughs> we're doing... Uh, I think I was explaining... Yeah, so I'm in, I'm in Arizona right now, which is not my normal place but i have collected all like 26 of the models that i will be displaying at the origami usa convention and like some of these i've had packaged since like july of last year so i don't know if you guys are like me but whenever i unpackage them it's it's kind of exciting because it's like wow i haven't seen this fold in a while like i wonder what I, i'm gonna think about it so for example, was, uh, since Bodo's here, right, I was reunited with the uh, Chernogen. I'm bringing that to the Origami convention. So 
that's that's pretty exciting. I think it's this is one very long flap here. Let me make sure I counted correctly. Yep. Cool. I got this thing. Ugh. But yeah, you Origami USA convention should be lit. I got a talk to my partner on a social media team. And so I'm gonna try to organize the giveaways with or in conjunction with Origami USA, but I'll also have a bunch of other stuff to give away. Then I got approval to run the live streams of the um, like late night folding and random free time and exhibition and stuff. So I'll be doing that there. At least on the Origami USA Instagram, I'm going to do an initial live stream of the exhibition. And then I might do a more private one either on YouTube or on my own Instagram later. But make sure to catch that at some point. Um, Trabojan, that's right. Yeah. Try not to go out of frame. I think, okay, the frame edge is here. That's fine. That should be good. One of my friends on Twitch, he has a, uh, like, an emo or a command that bonks him if he f goes out of, sh out of frame. I should, I should add that command so then I can hear it. You guys can bonk me if I go out of frame too much. Or Discord. Yeah, yeah, Bodo, that one might be a, a special private tour, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, so that should be pretty exciting as well. But yeah, even though the Samurai is asymmetrical, the goal was to not change like the major structures of it. So... The chest looks similar, and then the head is looks like, at least the hat is exactly the same. Well, actually, no, it's not exactly the same, but the folding sequence is very similar. It's a very, very similar structure. Um, different, different face, though, but I think the folding sequence for that is quite satisfying to watch, so I'm excited to do that. And it makes it a little easier to pre-crease. Um, so I guess that we're here. We're gonna mark off this for reference. I think the hardest part about this will just not loop, be losing myself when I'm uh, creasing through all these, uh, keeping track of all the creases as much as I can. Okay, so we're at the hat right here. So this area is going to be the hat. This is the start of it. So it's going to run two, four. I think right here is good. So the hat will be right here, exactly right there. I'm going to mark off the other crease. I technically don't need to do these pre-creases, but I'm doing it so that I can keep track of where the hat is. Um, for later. I don't know about you guys, but the red actually uh, hurts my eyes a little. Or it's my eyes can't track the creases as easily on this color. It's just very contrasty for me. Henry, ADN, yo, what's up? Hello, hello. What's up? Dude, doing doing pretty good. We're doing a Samurai speed run, so I'll be here for quite a bit. Um, I assume it'll we'll finish the collapse probably within like four or five hours. So that that's the goal there. I think like the shoulder pads for V3 more than the ones on this, but everything else is... Oh, you like... Interesting, interesting. Well, technically, you can do the same shoulder pads on the V3 as this one. Or at least you can do them similar. I'm not sure if you can do the exact same ones, but I see interesting. And yeah, so the only people who have seen the Samurai version four 
so far is the YouTube members. So Silverio knows what the Samurai version 4 looks like. And yeah, it does have different shoulder pads. Uh, these are pretty nice. I think they're a little bit mushed, but they you're right. The texture is pretty decent. I think out of this one, the best feature is probably the shoulder pads. Maybe maybe the helmet too, a little bit. I don't know. What you reckon how long the collapse will take? Yeah, I think... Yeah, I think the... So pre creasing should take maybe... Uh, so it would take 30 minutes, but since I'm talking and stuff, probably like 45 and then like four hours for collapsing. Maybe not four hours, maybe less. But like since I'm talking, that's what I'm estimating. I'm the, the chubby guy. Oh, hey, what's up, dude? Thanks for joining the stream. This is the fourth version. Yes, this is the fourth version, Simon. And it's finally... Um, it's finally asymmetrical. <laughs> I think, um, you know, it's it's not perfect in terms of like efficiency or whatever, but it's the most efficient out of the three, um, and it's the first one that's like truly flat folding too. <laughs> Everything's correct here, um, and we don't have the cursed thumb anymore, which is great. There, there's a lot of fixes. I think you were here for the other stream where I was talking about it, but uh, the asymmetry gives it a much larger sword as well. So that's, you know, can't, can't go wrong with that. And then it's got a closed, it actually has a neck and it has a closed back, which is also pretty fun. I think the, the one thing that it doesn't have is closed legs. So like one of the legs can be closed, but the other one is not. So it's like the fake 3D. However, um, Mark, who's not here yet, uh, he's also seen the crease pattern actually. Um, and he like redesigned it, <laughs> added his uh, amazing Mark skills and um, like redesigned it with closed legs and packed it just slightly differently so that the the sword sheath and the ex, the 3D legs work. So he's working on folding that right now actually. And I'm kind of leaking this right now, but there's that's going to be a collab later on. I think I'm going out of frame. Sorry guys. Um but yeah, Mark Mark is he's got a huge brain, so That'll be really cool. And then I'll probably fold that one later down the line as well, just because the legacy did on it, are they're really cool. So that, that'll be lit. I think uh, by folding those legs, at least, I'll be learning quite a lot. It's your first life that you've caught. Hey, thanks for joining, man. Welcome for your first time. This is this is a pretty good live to catch. I think sometimes my lives are kind of janky. I don't know, but uh, this this one's definitely a good one to to watch. Okay, so we've done. This is this is the close neck. This is the hat. This is the arms and shoulder. And then we'll do the other side of the arms here. And then the arms and the torso kind of connect to each other. So that'll be our next stage. The hips are disconnected from the legs though. So basically when, if you guys have watched anything about the Samurai version three, I think I go like head, arms, which are disconnected from everything else. And then like the body um, and legs, which are kind of connected. Um, in this case, it's like the head, body and arms are connected and then the legs are disconnected. So. A little, little bit of a flip-flop, but I think it works. I don't... Um, in some of my more recent designs, I've been disconnecting the torso from everything. And uh, Paper Forger, he would get upset at me for that because it wasted so much space. But um, this is different. The torso's woven into the rest of the design. 
which it was in the Samurai version 3 as well. It's it's kind of weird. It's like I had brain lag for a year or two and designed less efficiently, even though the Samurai version 3 wasn't really designed with much thought about efficiency at all. Um, but sometimes it sometimes it be like that. And uh, you like rediscover things you did, and then now I can make it better. <laughs> so um, I, I can understand why it's better too. And a nice thing about this being asymmetric is the hand that's free is in the corner. So the fingers are way easier, and I can shape them a little bit nicer than the other one. So then here's all the fingers. I don't really need to pre-crease these actually, so I won't even pre-crease these. I don't, I don't <laughs> well, we'll do that later because the next part, there is actually shoulder or wrist armor that goes through here. And we can kind of just uh, do something like this. And let me think if I need to pre-crease anything more on the... It might help to pre-crease a little bit here, because I'll forget. There is a sequence for this, and it's like spread squashy and stuff, but sometimes I forget how to do it. So if I have just like a little bit of the areas pre-crease, I think we'll be good to go. Eh, we'll, we'll do that later. I think, I think it'll be fine. As long as I have this, I think I'll remember. Oh, sorry, I missed those retracted messages. Uh, the paper is thinner. Um, the paper... The pap This paper is thinner than what I folded the other Samurai version 4 with. I think I showed that a little bit in a different stream. That was... Well, you didn't see if this is your first one, but... The, um... Oh, for the hands. Yeah, yeah, this is going to be way thinner for the hands. And even over here, this is going to be thinner for the hands. And I forgot to fold in the hands. So let me get that quickly. Um, how many units? Two, four, five. Five up from here. Two, four, five. The hands on this is thinner than on the V3 too. So even though the structure is similar for these hands, and a sword is longer, the hands are thinner, which is great. That's just a, it just works nicely like that. So basically up here, there's gonna be, this This one is the thumb, and then here is the other fingers. And then the handle's a little bit thicker, so. But yeah, it works out. I think it's, it's like a, there's no wasted space here anymore. Whereas on the version 3, for some reason, there was quite a lot of wasted space. Because um, the stretch was like here. I don't know. It didn't make sense why I did that. I think it's just... I, I free-folded it and it worked. And then I kept it like that without improving it. <laughs> okay, so we did the arms and the head. So we can switch over now to increase the torso. And on the version 3, there was a set of level shifters in the torso. And I realized that basically, it actually it is a kind of a cool shape where I can get this. But even on this, like I folded the level shifted layer like in half. And then I folded these ones in half uh, in like glued into body. So it's, it's not much different than just having the two unit. And then the only reason why this works with being a four is because like everything else is thicker, but it kind of makes the legs a little stubby. Um, or it's if I do any other shaping besides having the legs straight, it's gonna look a little bit stubby. So I was like, I can save a lot of paper and not have those level shifters. Um, it'll be good to go, and that is the case here. It also makes it a little bit. I don't know if it makes it easier to fold actually, but it's uh, it works at least. <laughs> okay, so this one starts here. 
This is where I messed up the first time though on pre-creasing is I lost track of these creases. But I think this time since I actually added these ones, it'll be easier for me to keep track. And then how big is this? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten, okay. Two, four, <clears throat> six, eight. I don't know if you guys do this too, if you like have to count. A lot of times I'll count out loud to myself to, uh, so I don't mess up. Two, four, six, eight, ten. But sometimes even when I do count, I still mess up. Because, <laughs> uh, a lot of times I might overcrease this and then it throws me off. Two, four, two, four, six, seven. Okay. When they're odd, I generally don't mess, or even I don't mess up, but when they're odd, sometimes I do. This is two, four, six, and then seven, right? But I think this, oh yeah, this works. Seven. Two, four, six, seven. Yo, what's up, Mark? We were talking about you a little bit earlier about how you revised this design to give the legs um, closed legs. And it's very, very impressive. So, yeah, I almost went best up there <laughs> and miscounted to six instead of seven caught myself and then here these are little pleats for these chest um, and these are level shifted down so I don't have anything level shifting up level shifting down is nice um, and that one's kind of cool to do it's a little bit fidgety but it's pretty fun in my opinion here and then and we have another pleat here but this one we don't level shift down <clears throat> four five two four five and then that will become the face which actually in the first time i folded this i forgot to uh pre-crease the face and it made it kind of a pain to do after like half of it was collapsed but it was still possible wait wrong account lol <laughs> i'm a mod on this one there you go uh is this a speed run any percent um this is yeah speed run to base collapse any percent this uh or i guess it's grid grid to base collapse any percent No, so this not it, it, sorry, this is not any percent. This is uh speedrun grid to base collapse. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I think any percent would be um you know, square to shaping. Any percent. Any glitches allowed? Uh yeah, yeah, any glitches except scissors. Um no scissors. So you wanna if you find any time skips in terms of like pre-creasing or collapsing, you know, by all means that that'll be the uh, the the tech to practice. And then this is like the baseline for setting the estimated time. All right, time to V. Okay, so one thing I like to do is whenever I have something symmetrical like this and I'm creasing. I check to make sure these are aligned because then I'm pretty sure that I got the uh, um, pre-creasing correct. Okay. And then from here, this side is a little bit different. So this one goes up five, two. And actually, I'm not exactly sure if this is fully correct for what I actually did on the other one, but I think it is. So. But basically these be completed because this is like the back armor 
and I kind of collapsed that after I did everything else, so I kind of guessed on the crease pattern, but it looks like it works from what it shows uh, on the folded version by Ori Edit. So we're going to hope that this is what I actually did too. But And if it is, then that's great. And if it's not, then I can fix it. Okay, and then this one should go up two, four, six. And if this is correct, then we did everything correct. Two, four, six, perfect. All right, so we pre-creased this whole segment correctly. That is good news. Shortcutting scale shaping. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. That's what I did for uh, for this, right? These are f fake, fake shaped scales. Any percent no skips or glitches. Oof. Yeah, I guess this this one will be the no glitches and no skips. Fernando, hello. Thank you. Thanks for joining the stream. Hey, you have really impressive work too, man. I'm glad I'm subscribed to your Patreon. It's really, really exciting to see what you're working on. Niz, might as well be, oh yeah, I read that. Um, Henry, um, what do y'all think of models with several papers? Um, I do not like them as much <laughs> unless they're really cool modulars that have a uh, like there has to be a good purpose like i think there's some was it gen hajiwara who had the compound color changed models those ones are cool uh the gear by k morisue that's a really cool modular because it has a super difficult locking mechanic uh, mechanism but it works really well and it's a gear so it's cool that one's cool Generally, representational models I don't like with multiple pieces of paper unless it is compound color uh, because there's no reason to use multiple sheets. It can always be done with one sheet. So, yeah. And Henry, is your name pronounced Henry or is it like Henri, like more of a French kind of pronunciation, which I have no French accent, so I apologize. But let me know what you want me to call you. Okay, so now, before we forget, we need to pre-crease the face. And then I'm going to pre-crease the pleats for the, um, uh, like, the partials. Because if we do the partials, we don't have to pre-crease the transition units. Um, which I would rather pre-crease the partials than pre-crease the transition units. Uh, and it makes the folding sequence a little bit nicer. And then Mark, we were talking about this earlier, about the face. Right, I think you figured out the sequence already, but this is all the pre-creasing I do here for it, is I basically just fold the diamonds, and I fold another diamond through this one. Because that just gives me the reference points for the... I don't know what you would call it, like a, a squash fold, a spread squash or something through the layers. But, uh... <clears throat> the rest of the pre-creases don't really show up, um, but they help. I learned that not doing this is I normally get the these parts wrong, and then it like angles the mouth kind of in a weird way. So I do that sometimes, like in theory, probably the better thing to do would now to be like fold these ones in just so they're a little bit straighter. But that's like really all you need to do. Um, and for those curious, this face is the same one as the alone. It's the same one as the um, like hobgoblin mask I did. I don't think I posted that one, but the crease pattern for the face is available. It's a uh, it's not the greatest. There's there's some changes I want to do with it, but it works pretty like it's very flexible. And the mouth is made from a partial 192nd, which is, it sounds scary, it's not, but what it means is that the mouth pleat doesn't go across the whole entire face. Um, so it's like, it's 
I, I don't know. For me, it's easier to get it look better. I don't know if that was English, <laughs> but it's uh, I, I prefer it. Okay, this next section I'm going to pre-piece on the other side, actually, because it just makes it... Uh, from folding it last time, it made it easier to deal with here. So I think... Let me make sure I counted this right. Yeah, it's two and then one like this. Ugh. Try not to hit my tripod. Like that. And this flap on top here connects to the helmet as well as becomes the front part of the helmet. So this here would normally be the hair for our face, but we don't need hair. So that just becomes part of the helmet. And we don't need to pre-crease any further than that because the rest of the creases are handled from the folding sequence of the hat. Okay, so now all we have left to do is pre-crease the partials on here. So this flap, and I try to pre-crease these um, the same direction as it will be on when I collapse it again, just so that I can easily just sequentially do the transition units without pre-creasing or flipping too many creases. Um, especially since this paper is a little bit softer, it kind of helps. Use the one you prefer, French or English. Okay, I will use English because I think my, my French is too rusty and it will come off worse and kind of cringe. So I will call you, I will call you Henry. I, I studied French for like four years in high school, but uh, after that I kind of lost it. Uh, I, thankfully, during that time I actually visited... Uh, Paris, so I could order food and ask a fair amount of questions, and I could understand a lot of people when I was there. I, I that has, and then that was like seven years ago. So <laughs> sadly, I, I no longer have that ability. Uh, what's your opinion on painting certain parts of the paper to get details instead of color changes? I prefer the idea of painting the color changes after folding the model. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, I think it's, I prefer designing the color change. I don't necessarily need to make a fully like two toned paper. Uh, I would be okay with just painting or doubling the parts that are shown with color change, which that's a technique I learned from Bodo. Um, and that that's more for like the aesthetic because then you don't have colors bleeding through if it's like a white or black model. Um, like, and it, it, the only reason why I would think you would actually make like a full color change sheet would either to be to show the aesthetic or not, not to, not as much to show the aesthetic, but for the technicality, like the goal of technical achievement there would be a good use. But otherwise I don't quite feel the need to, to do that. Um. Because a lot of times it gets a little bit too thick. But I I don't like painting non-color change to look color changed. Um, I did technically allow that in the most recent OBB competition. Um, but that was just the design of the model. But I, I, I prefer designed colored natural color. I, I don't know. It's, it's not too hard to do, right? Yeah, for me, it feels way more satisfying to... To design a color change and i'm not that great at color change designs anyways but i still like to to do it there's, a, there's something really nice about it that probably only origami folders can appreciate <laughs> if they see the crease pattern okay two four six i can't make a thin enough black and, exactly exactly so like um to get that stark black and white it's just just color change the parts that need to be color changed. 
and you're chilling. And yeah, thickness. Thickness too. Two, four, six. I assume the same as on the other side. Two, four, six. Yep. So, Mark, I'm changing this structure like a little bit on this side. I'm making it crossed two instead of crossed one. Um, it's not a huge difference, but I think it'll even out if I want to use this for the closed back instead of the other side. Um, but I think the shape will be a little bit nicer even if I don't. So yeah, I think the, the, the paper lost here is still kind of in the center. It's not as much as if I did the whole torso from the center. But at least these flaps, I don't use the whole th like width. So there's a couple layers that are unused on the end. Which you'll see when I finish this pleat. But instead of it being like 20 layers unused, it's like 4. So that's a lot better <laughs> than 20. Uh, the 4 is still a fair amount. You can do a lot of details with just 4 layers. Okay, three, it's supposed to meet, and it does. Right, so we have two, okay, we have six. We have six unused layers right here. These aren't used. Um, it technically shows, basically, but I, I pleat three here. So it, it is kind of a loss. There's probably something I could do here. I just can't think of what other detail to add. Uh, but in theory, you could do a fancier design, or you could add, like, I don't know, a dagger maybe to the side. It wouldn't really make any sense, honestly. But, um, yeah, so it's, it's a lot better than, you know, what it used to be, <laughs> where more was wasted. What's up, Chris? Simon, have you ever folded Samurai from paper besides Unryu? He, uh, so the first one was the first Samurai version 4. So the, the, the one I showed in the unarchived stream and the one that's completed right now is uh, Wenjo rice paper. And it's the Amazon Wenjo rice paper too. So the the fake Wenjo. And it's like fake Wenjo because it's it's like part of the rice paper and part uh, mulberry. So it's not like pure Wenjo, but it's it felt like Wenjo. It definitely felt much nicer than this. And it was a little bit thicker than this, but man, those creases held like really well. Um, so it's, it's a good enough alternative, I think, than buying the one directly from China. Uh, there was, there wasn't a huge difference except the size. The size that it came in was not as large as the other one. All right. So we done the torso and the arms. We just have the legs now and then the sheath. So the legs start in the corner and then on this end is going to be this, the sword sheath. <laughs> Yeah, Mark is a is a mod. Background story about that a little bit. In one of my other streams, we had some bots starting to spam, even though this is a subscriber only chat. And so I promoted a uh, Mark and then the YouTube member Silverio to mod status, and they've been helping me nuke those mods if they those bots if they ever come. <clears throat> this one's eleven units long, I think. Two, four. How are you doing, Chris? Two, four, six, eight. Yeah, but for Samurais, like, Unryu works so well. I don't know. Like, if, if you need a paper that's guaranteed to be able to fold it, then Unryu, right? Um, I think it, does, it doesn't look as nice as the Wenjo, low-key, now that I fold it from Wenjo. But at the time, like, uh, the double tissue Samurais that I, I'd, like, help people make... They just didn't quite turn out as nice. This one might be fine from double tissue because it's structured better. Uh, so that would probably work too. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Unryu. 
or mulberry. There's like the machined mulberry that doesn't have these long fibers running through it. One, two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Hold on, I gotta recount this so I don't mess up. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Okay, we're good there. And so this is the waistcoat section here. And let me make sure I decrease this correctly. Power Paper One, hello. The only product where the Chinese one is better. I mean, most chi products are Chinese, right? Like iPhones, they're made in China. But I think people consider them American. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Crease pattern isn't somewhere early in the stream. No, no, no. Crease pattern has not been revealed except to the YouTube members. Um, even on other Discord servers, I don't think... Oh, the only exception that's not a YouTube member, I think, is Mark. And, yeah, so he, maybe Mark is special, you can think. But, uh, yeah, if you want to see it, you can join the YouTube membership. Or you can wait because it'll be released publicly on like June 24th, I think. It's just uh, YouTube members see everything early. Or basically they see everything first. Um, so like even as I was working on the crease pattern, like they saw like four different Samurai version 4 crease patterns um, as I kept changing it and improving it. Is this structure totally redesigned from scratch? No, no, no. So the goal was to not redesign it from scratch. Um, the goal was to keep the main elements, which was like the helmet and the kind of the torso and then like the hand, the sword hand. But like kind of it make it similar enough to this that it looks just like a upgrade. So the this hand is it's similar, but it's improved. The head is almost exactly the same, except for the face and the neck. But on the other one, the head was in the middle. So this one like is fully symmetrical. So this is actually just connected here. This one is fully asymmetrical. So the sheath is here, the other hand's up there, and everything else is spread out. Which it works a lot better for what my original goal was when I designed a samurai. Um, so now that I've learned, it was like, hey, let's uh, let's have another go at the samurai using our knowledge and see how much better we can just make the design without completely designing it from scratch. And then Mark improved this one even more technically. So, but yeah, you guys will have to wait to see that. That one's pretty exciting. Nice, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Silverio, I want to fold it before it's released. Yeah, dude, go for it. I just, if you do fold it, I ask you not to post it before I post mine. Uh, which is, yeah, there, so you, you can post it like after. Um, but go ahead and try. It's, it's, uh, I mean, there might be some people who are crazy enough to, that can fold it from this stream. Uh, I don't recommend that though. I recommend just, just wait till I release the crease pattern. Um, you'll save yourself a lot of trouble. <laughs> but that's pretty exciting. So we're almost done pre-creasing the legs here. Uh, boys, what kind of movies and shows do you like? Um, I watch... Uh, movies? I like a lot of different... I like thought-provoking movies. So, and I like the Marvel movies too. I don't know, superhero movies are cool. A lot of action. I like uh, my favorite movies though are like uh, Inception and like The Dark Knight and uh, Interstellar. Basically, Christopher Nolan movies. I really like Christopher Nolan movies. They're uh, even the Batman one. Like the commentary on society is like pretty spectacular. Um, so 
I, I like that. And then TV shows, I like. I watch a lot of anime. I like pretty much every single anime genre uh, for different reasons. I like fantasy because I draw a lot of inspiration for my origami from there. I like slice of life because they're wholesome sometimes. And I like the psychological ones because the anime writers, they tell a really great story. So um, I'm always impressed more by the story writing of certain animes than like live action TV shows. <clears throat> See, did I miss anyone else's comments? Really, I uh, really want to try Wenjo, but I have a ton of... Yeah, I mean, you don't really need Wenjo until... Like, Wenjo won't make you a better folder, basically. Or, like, it doesn't have to replace double tissue. It, it only really replaces double tissue if you have, like, the certain reason for using Wenjo. Whether it be, like, oh, I'm finally capped on my shaping ability with DT, which is really hard to do, because DT is nearly infinitely scalable, right? But it would be like, maybe you want to dye the Wenjo a certain color. And you think it'll look better than trying to dye double tissue. That'd be a good reason. Or you like the stark white machined texture of the rice paper versus like a tissue paper. Um, looks super different. Yeah, looks super different. Um, head looks like it's near the top and the shoulders... Now along the right and left edges. Here, Chris, I'll show you the... Um... Yeah, the, the nice thing about the samurai with the swords, it's designed to... It's basically... It looks probably better if you have two swords. So you can do like an Elden Ring kind of dual katana style dude instead of having to sheath at the side. Um, so Chris, up here is the sword, right? And it's really long. Shoulders are here, the head is right here, and then the other arm is right here. The same shoulders actually, so the shoulders are symmetrical, they're just shifted. And then since we don't need a sword on this side, we just have the arm here with the edge for fingers, and then the top corner is uh, wrist armor. And then down here is legs. And then over here, so this part can be done a little bit better too, which Mark redesigned this section. But because the sword is so long, I wanted to make sure the sheath was long enough too. So that's why I decided to stick it in the corner instead of using these flaps, which I was originally going to do. However, Mark did something fancy, so the sheath is long enough and it's from here, so... Uh, it's kind of crazy, but at least in here, this is like very simple packing. Uh, let me hold on. I got to count this really quick. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13. Okay. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13. Recount that. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13. 13. I went a little bit too far, I think. Okay. That's fine. And then we just need to make sure we don't go too far on this side. So this is two. Two. Color change. Um, No, the sword isn't color change, but you can color change it. If it it'd be a little bit mushy. Actually, no, it doesn't even have to be mushy. Uh, you would just have to, like, pleat in. So you just shrink the sword, the sword by, like, two units. And then you can color change. Which I already actually do. Because this one, the sword has a hand guard. Um, trying to see if I have the other example. I don't. But it has a hand guard. And with that hand guard, you can unwrap the... Here, I'll, I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys. So it's, I'm not showing you the Samurai version 4, but it's similar to on the Dragon Knight where it has this handguard. You can unwrap the layer on the sides and color change the sword pretty easily, uh, which I think you can even do on this one too. But uh, it's the, the sword is not as 
why it is this. So you, you, you can technically color change it. I think parts of the armor would be color changed as well. It's not intentional though. This is not intended to use color change or to have color change. So I think there's a couple accidental ones in the shoulder plates. But yeah. I always treat the sheath of another sword, but oh yes. Um, my favorite right now is Ready Player One by Steve. Oh yeah, that's a great movie. I like that movie too. Uh, I think uh, even especially my generation and people older than me can understand all those older references too. So it's pretty lit. Someone should try treating like ten to twenty sheets of tissue. Might be good. Like, oh goodness. I think triple is enough for wet folding. 10 might be excessive. I think at that point, you just choose a different paper. Like arches. Like, um, like I don't think 10... So that's like 200 GSM, right? So this one is around 200 GSM too, but like there's no... like I feel like the double tissue would wrinkle and warp and stuff, but this one, it naturally stretches... And it probably holds way better than tissue. So, and at that point, it's gonna cost the same too, cause like it's like five or six dollars for ten sheets of tissue if it's nice tissue. It's like you should probably you should probably just use this <laughs> instead of ten sheets of tissue. Um, I think it's better. Um, two swords are epic. That's a lot of layers in the shoulders. Yeah. So the shoulders, Chris. I actually use the layers, which is great. Because in this one, I technically use them too, but it's mushed. In this one, we spread out the layers quite a bit. They can wrap around the arm, the ones that aren't as used. Or you can use them as details and pleats. And then there's like a, a large 2x2 two two square for a shoulder pad that's all structural. So it, yeah, I use all of it up till the transition unit. They don't get wasted, which is great. It's like, finally, boys, you're using the paper. Um, <laughs> um, should I try to color change it? Oh, give it a see how it looks, Mark. I think for color change, like this part can color change. Part of it can color change. Actually, no, don't color change this. You'll shorten the legs too much. But maybe on yours, you can because your legs have more room. Um, I don't know. Give it a shot. Let me know how it goes. I think with this base version it wouldn't look as good except maybe just color change sword but on your version mark you have more flexibility triple tissue is still very thin i folded with quad tissue and it was still thinner than printer paper so yeah i, I mean it'd be an experiment i guess so my uh yeah i guess uh this is this is triple tissue right so it's not that thick but um, it depends what kind of model you're doing too. Okay, so we finished pre-creasing for the general structure. The only other thing I want to do is pre-crease. I use a ridge pleat here and I want to pre-crease part of this one so that I don't have to do the sequence, which would add a bunch of creases into this. I'm, I also do reach pleats here, but this one I'm okay with doing the sequence because the extra creases kind of add some like rusticness to the, the leg armor. But this one, I don't want that. So we're just going to fold some 22 and a half degree lines, which is just like this. Very, very easy. Trying to make it as precise as possible. Yeah, this is another thing that is like a. I was talking earlier in the stream how I was like rediscovering techniques I used and then like brain lagged or skill issued myself and stopped using them. Because I used to do this for like thinning insect legs out, right? Because you can really thin out a, a layer like this. And I used this for the. Like, I used it here for these, even. And then for, like, two years, I forgot to ever use them for anything 
until Forger reminded me on one of my other models that's not released yet just to use ridge pleats. And I was like, dude, you're so right. Why did I ever get so long about this? Okay, I think it goes up four units. So one, two, three, four. Okay, we need to go a little bit, a little bit more. Uh, but it's good to use them again, and I'm gonna spam using them. I think because I need to not forget to use them again. <laughs> Plus, they're just they're just really useful for stuff like this. Um, so when you guys see the crease pattern, you'll see a lot of these. Um, it works pretty well. Two, four. Mark, my dove and Articuno are from the backing baking paper in PVA. Yo, let's let's go. That sounds interesting, Mark. Isn't baking paper a little waxy? Does the does the PVA stick well? And did I put this in correctly? Uh, I don't think so. So up two would be here. This goes till one, two, three, four, right to there. So here to here. And then two, four here to here. Okay, and then I might also pre crease in the other ones just because why not? It's pretty easy to do, and we'll make our lives easier later. And then yeah. Ridge pleats high key super useful when you don't have room to add a real one unit flaps. Exactly, exactly like that. Yeah, if you're not like color changing anything, you don't really need to use a full unit flap. Have you seen the crease pattern for the legs of Oda Noguna? I'm not, I don't know that model by name, so I can't say I have or haven't, but. Uh, do they have a lot of ridge pleats, Silverio? Okay, we got two more right here. Yeah, Chris, I get to, guys, I get to meet Chris at the Oregon USA convention. So Chris, you'll be one of the first people that see this in person, or ba basically to see this at all um, when you arrive in New York. Because I'll be posting, I think on Saturday, either either Friday night or Saturday. So. I think you'll have had a chance to see it in the exhibition before anyone else does, <clears throat> since you're exhibiting as well. And yeah, guys, I, I got to meet Chris. How cool is that? That's pretty cool. I also have a gift for you, Chris. So when, when we meet, I, I got some a little special. For you and Plant, when I when I meet you guys, so it's gonna be lit, mega hype. What is the what is new in Samurai version four? Um, I'm not gonna send that link, or I can't check that out that link out now, Severio. But I'll check it out later. Um, it doesn't actually work, or it doesn't actually. But I was trying new things. Oh, I see. Regular glue worked better on the baking paper. Yeah, that's that's what I would thought. Would have thought. I was like, uh. But nice. Um, but it still works, right? Um, let me ex answer a couple more. Uh, take some good origami samurai battle pictures. Yes, will do. 
Wait, now I have to bring one, lol. Also, the pose on the model is six of her. Oh, okay, maybe I should check this out. Okay, hold on. Give me a second, guys. And then, uh, Runak Meta, I will answer your question in just a little bit. Let me, um... Is this a Yuan Hui Lai model? Oh, that's super sick. Those are some thin legs. Uh, tape method. Let's go. Let's see the crease pattern. Okay, so it uses, yeah, the, the ridge shifters. That's interesting. I didn't know they could collide with just that, like nothing else in the middle. And it still work. And still have that much flexibility in the hips. But I guess if you thin the legs that much, then you kind of do. Her waist is so thin, though. That's crazy. That's pretty dope. Wait. Mark, don't say anything. <laughs> it's. I don't think that's the finished one, though. I didn't finish the shaping on that one. But that's okay. If you guys want to give me a follow on Twitch as well, you can you can see it. Um, but I think uh, even if you see that, the uh, debut pictures will be pretty spectacular. Yeah, Obelisk does that on a lot of his models. But he has... He, normally he has something in the middle though. So like on the John Arc, he has the, the waistcoat coming between the legs instead of um on that one is like on the side right you guys saw nothing <laughs> all good all good the skirt for john right 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 i gave that model away i don't have it anymore but otherwise i would pull it out for a uh, reference and the same for asana oh I, I have that one that one's tucked away right but yeah the skirts from the center i think so it's like this where i have something in the center versus on the other one it came like it was just just a v like that and the, it shifted through but maybe i'll have to play around with that too for my um my stick figure designs where it's kind of like that okay what I, what, what was i doing we did the ridge Okay, we pre crease that. I don't think we need to do these ones. Uh, it would make it convenient, but we don't need to. We can just start collapsing. Um, I think. Let me let me look at my crease pad one more time in case I forgot anything. Okay, I guess we can... No, we don't need it for the other arm, too. I can do that sequentially as well. All right, I think we're good to go. Um, so, first things first, guys. So, collapse. So, I did the pre-creasing in about, like, an hour. So, that was a little bit longer than 45 minutes, but I've had a great time chatting with you guys, so I think it's worth. Um, collapse time. So, let's find the head. Because this can follow the same um, sequence as the Samurai version 3. Mostly. I changed the way it... I think the way it connected in... Like the shifter initially was uh, kind of jank. But now it's a little bit nicer. Um, and it actually gives more flexibility in the head. Um, and when I get to that, it'll make more sense. And then I'll compare it with the Samurai version 3. And then, okay, so uh, Ronak's question. What was new about the version 4? The version 4 is asymmetrical versus the version 3 is symmetrical. The crease pattern is flat folding. So like it's designed better in terms of following origami rules, and it's designed better in terms of efficiency. The sword is longer. It has closed back. 
So like this one, it doesn't really have a closed back. The most you could close is like this, and then you can kind of close that, but it's it's not really closed. Um, I changed the waistcoat. It doesn't really have this type of waistcoat, and the chest is a little bit different. And yeah, the so basically this is very mushed. Most of this is structured. No more, no more mush. Or there's still a little bit of mush, but less. Less mush. Finally, I learned the helmet process. Yeah, there you go, Mark. I don't know how you... Or, I don't know... I don't know what... Or, I wouldn't want to do this without doing the sequence. <laughs> yeah, so the story behind the helmet, guys. I designed a helmet... The very first thing I ever did for the samurai was design a helmet. And I was at an amusement park waiting in line for a ride. And I had brought Kami with me, and I was testing a whole bunch of different structures because I didn't, I wasn't that great at designing back then. This was for the Samurai version one, by the way. So I was very new to box pleat design, but I stumbled upon this sequence, which is just like a tessellation sequence, but it was new to me. I was like, oh hey, I have the space now to add like arms and legs to this. So this will be our samurai hat. Um, and then in the version three DLC, it turned from a rice hat into a samurai helmet with the same structure, just cause there's a lot of room. But this sequence, it's it's been a while, it's been there for a while. It's nothing too special, but it works well for what it is. And since it's not smack in the middle of the paper anymore, it, it, I don't know, it uses the paper a little bit better maybe, but uh, at least for closed neck. I think it'd be a little bit more efficient if I could fit it into the edge. Uh, but this part turns into closed neck, so that that is actually, like I think it looks pretty decent. Um, the YouTube members and Mark have seen it. I think the closed neck actually looks pretty worth it, worth the use of the paper there. What are my thoughts on moths? Moths are pretty cool. We have some pretty big ones here in Arizona. They don't really bother anyone much unless they get into like clothing. Pretty lit. They're very delicate though. A lot of times the moths will like fly into like they'll just zap themselves in random street lights and smack into windows. And leave like dust everywhere. Yeah, so basically, Mark, you turn it into a water bomb base kind of type thing. And then this way, you don't actually have to pre crease like all those uh, diagonals that go through to make up the helmets. So, and let me actually show the uh, Samurai version 3 crease pattern. Since we're doing this, it'll be a reference. Okay, so this is like the non-flat folding one, but even with this one, there's like all these, all of this here is like from here. And then the major change from the other one, which was like a squash fold here is, and then a closed sink is I just valley fold. Like I basically just reverse fold uh, the corner in. Right? And then I close sync this corner. So. So like, uh, without the sequence, I think it'd be kind of painful to brute force from the crease pattern. <laughs> um, but from the sequence, it's like way easier. 
But you can see from here, like we have this much room, this much freedom in the hat versus on the squashed version. Like there was, it got stuck like within here a lot more because that's all, like, that's all you really get. So we, we get a lot more room here. And then basically from here, you just, uh, it's probably better to at least pre-crease this new layer a little bit. Um, and then you close sync it. And the close sync is really easy. You can confirm the pane. <laughs> so normally, normally I do all of them in the here first before I close sync. But I can just show a close sync here, like, like that's that's all it is. And then you just do that on all the sides, so like that. And we'll we'll do this one too while we're at it. I think yeah, on the other the original Samurai version three, I would do this and I'd squash fold into the corner. Um but this is I think this is easier even than that. And it's better. So Like Ryujin scales. Um the start of it, I guess. I mean this is just freeing like anytime you free a flap, you can do this with any layer. So I do this actually for the shoulders. I do this in the, if you look at my dragon plate armors. So this one, yeah, all these, all these pulled layers are, are like this kind of. Um, it's just uh, this closing part is a little bit different to get the four by four, but. It makes it way easier. But yeah, in a reusion scale, right? So you would do something like this. Oh yeah, I guess you're right. It is really close to a reusion scale, actually. It's, <laughs> it is, uh, yeah. I didn't even think about that till now. Yeah, like a shaped scale. Because then it would these would be technically scales too, but you do the whole thing where you sink it in and whatnot. Um uh, in version three, when you sink it, do you have to do a swivel? Oh you have to do a yeah, yeah, yeah. The swivel that's right. So after you squash fold it, you have to swivel and then you can close the rest of it. Yeah, it was that was painful and less effective. Um, you plan on bringing moss, very nice. Will moss eat paper? No, okay. Most moss don't even eat as adults. Oh, interesting, I didn't know that. Smooth closed sink. Yeah, right, it's, it's so much better than the swivel fold version of the V3. Uh, take notes on how to shape it. We're not shaping today. We're just doing a base because I think shaping would reveal too much. Did I say, oh, what's up, Ollie? Did he say if he's making a tutorial video? Lunatic Origami, hello. I know you. Welcome. Thanks for watching the stream. First time watching stream. Hey, let's go. Yeah, you guys made it a good time. We're starting to collapse. Tutorial, that's a big question. Um... I don't know if I'm going to do a tutorial yet because I've done tutorial for the version 1, version 2, and version 3 Samurais. So version 4, it might be a little excessive. At least I won't make it soon. I think I'm, I'd am i rather make the dragon plate armor tutorial than this one. But maybe in a year we'll get it. <laughs> version 4. I don't know. There's a lot of video ideas I have. Um and requests that I have to sort through. So we'll see if we have time for a, a Samurai version. I think it, the video would do well though. I bet it would get like a lot of views because my most viewed videos are those Samurai tutorials. Um, and this one's definitely a pretty cool 
design. But we shall see. We shall see. But I think the crease pattern is much better to follow than the V3 at least. So if you've done the V3, you can most likely do the V4. It's not like the V4 is harder or anything. It's, again, the V4 is probably easier to collapse. Um, or just as easy. Just as easy as the V3. The shaping is a little bit harder, maybe, because of the face. I think uh, faces in general, most people can't do on first try. Or it won't look good. Like, they can fold it, but they won't be able to make it look good. Um... But it it it's just look that's just how it be with faces. Never even folded it. Oh lol. Uh, very cool. Currently folding V three myself. So any more tutorials would be. I see. I see. I see. Yeah. I mean, those V three tutorials will get you pretty far. I think. Um, yeah, the V three is still pretty sweet. Like. But uh, yeah. We'll, it'll it'll be a while. I think before V four comes out. But maybe, maybe if there's petition enough to do V4, then we can do it. But um, No, this corner is like stuck. I'm going to free it. Because this is going to be for the horn. So I don't want this corner to be stuck. Come on, paper. This is uh, the one downside of unreuse. Sometimes when there's an uneven fiber, like right on the middle of the crease like this, it kind of gets itself stuck, but that's okay. Fixable with tweezers, I like the back half of a tweezer or any kind of poking tool. All right. So now we just have to do those reverse folds and then the closed sinks. Can you take this stream as ha- I mean, yeah, that's the other thing too. Like this stream is almost a tutorial. As long as I stay in frame. Um. <laughs> but with the crease pattern, so it'll, it'll, um, I guess I even showed the pre-creasing, right? It'd probably be hard to follow, but with the crease pattern and then this stream, the collapse should be pretty easy. Even if you're not the best at crease patterns yet, if you've like done a couple where you're like decent at box plating, uh, this should be no problem. This stream will be no problem. But yeah, so this is this is an archive stream, so it'll be around. That's, I think we have, do we have all the reverse folds? So we did close things on that side. Um, all the reverse folds are done. So we can close, let's start here. Let's close sync this. Yeah, just do like a voiceover. <laughs> a voiceover. Oh, you right. I mean, I'm technically doing a voiceover right now, right? Plus with the live chat, I don't know. Maybe this could, I mean, this would be like way longer than the tutorial would be. Um, with a lot of like extra information, but maybe that's more entertaining. Who knows? And it's a slower pace, so like as people are following along, they'll, they'll be good to go. Instead of like, all right guys, do this on the other side. I'll see you when you complete it. <laughs> but uh, I think the film quality for this is not as good because I'm using my other camera in a lower bit rate and lower quality. So if I do do a tutorial, it'll be like in 4K and stuff with a nice camera. How can I get better at shaping? Um, there's, I think the fastest way to get better at shaping 
is to do a lot of shaping. To fold a lot, uh, or tr pick pick a topic you want to get better at shaping in. So like say your topic is dragons, right? Or, or humanoids, right? Which is kind of hard. Fold humanoids, shape humanoids, and then the way you learn is you get constructive criticisms. So you can use origami Dan in the constructive criticism chat. Get constructive criticisms figure out what you need to change, like listen to those really well. Um, you know, be fully open to all the criticisms. There might be some bad criticisms, but normally they're pretty helpful. But if you can keep yourself in a humble and learnable state to follow in, like part of listening is not just reading the criticisms, but actually acting on those criticisms. So if you can act on those criticisms and on your next fold, try really hard to do the same and you repeat that process, that's probably your fastest way to get better at shaping. Because your own eye can often be limited to what you can see. So it's great to have other eyes and that are more trained to have a look at your work and they'll find things that are wrong that your eye can't yet see. And it'll help you, it'll help train your own eye to recognize what else is wrong over time. For example, even with this design, the Ceramar version 4, which I think turned out pretty good, I talked with Mark, and Mark pointed out things that I could do, even design-wise, um, that would help. And already that's helped me. Even as I was shaping the first version of this design. But yeah, so that's that's my advice. Um, also, if there's there could be other limiting factors. Like if you're still using printer paper, uh, that's, you know, don't worry about getting better at shaping yet. Get better paper first, you know? So there, there's some of those factors too. Like if you're busy with school, study for school first, you know? Uh, but outside of that, in terms of pure folding advice, that's my advice. Has it ever happened to you guys that you're like 80 steps on one side and it says repeat? Honestly, I don't mind that. There's, uh, I'm pretty patient. So even if it's like 100 steps I have to repeat, uh, normally it's predictable. So it's, I don't mind it. Um, that was a long answer. I hope, I hope you, I hope that worked. Um, Mark, or take the Mayu Allen class on shaping. Yeah, the, that's also yeah, supplement yourself with external resources to learn as much as you can. And you can do that just by listening to it. You'll get ideas and you don't even have to fold anything. You just listened, and you get ideas and you try them later. Um, Mayu shaping class is exactly it. Mayu shaping class is really good. Yeah, it, getting advice from the people that are really good is often better than, you know, some random folder that's also learning at the same time like those people can give you criticisms and stuff but if there's a class like the mayu shaping class you you know you're in for a treat um max maxi yo yo guys what's up bodo yes but when is the english version coming <laughs> that's funny i mean just seeing how mayu holds paper and shapes also is like You'll, you'll learn a lot just just watching Mayu. Even just looking at his folds and being like, okay, why is his so good? Um, if you can actually start to know for yourself why it's good, that's that's really helpful. I think I talk about that a little bit in like origami reviews. So like if you can train yourself to know what looks good and why. Like obviously it's, it's easy to tell when something looks good, but if you can understand why, then that's like extra helpful, you know? That's that next level of understanding. Okay, so the next step, I'm just pleading everything up to be easier to handle um, and to stay in frame. And then we're probably gonna do the arms and then the neck area so that we can basically leave this whole thing as like a pleated stick and just collapse downwards. I think that would be the best way to, to collapse this guy. Where is the Mayu shaping class? Not Paul. <laughs> Might do an online. 
All right, so you guys will have to wait for the Mayu class. Uh, maybe I'll have to uh, ask Mayu to do an interview on my channel. You can give some insight. An origami review with Mayu. That sounds fun. I need to plan this out. I have an idea for how I want to do the next set of or, uh, origami reviews and make it better as in like an interview kind of format and for people to hear and learn about it than just kind of doing a regular origami review format. So yeah, that that's like more of a priority. That's like the project I'd much rather do than a, a Samurai version 4 tutorial, honestly. I think, I think people would find that really useful too. Uh, both the creators and the uh, viewers. Also recommend watching Yuho's videos in 0.25x. That's true too. Boys, did you see that burp finish fixing? Of I have, yes. Um, burb is cracked, dude. I've seen a lot of burb stuff. It's pretty amazing. Always impressed. Because Bird and Avi, man, they're, those two are, they put in good work. Okay, so here we are for starting the arm collapse. And all I have to do here is follow the Elias stretches. And then I'll do the ridge pleat afterwards. Since that's pre creased too, it'll be really easy to do from the collapsed stretches. And then actually, I'm. Mm, do I want to pre-crease these? I don't think I really need to pre-crease the neck please. It's going to take me a little bit longer when they're not pre-creased, but uh, we're just going to do the spread squash the or the, <coughs> the uh, pleat through the whole layer pre-creasing and then crease in the transition units while I'm collapsing it. I think that, that's, that's the, the route we will travel. I probably shouldn't leave these pleated because they don't need to be. Yo, Mayu slash Allen review equals origami as sculptural art. I think definitely from Mayu's standpoint because Mayu's pretty well trained in art. Alan is mega cracked too. Yeah, it'd be cool to do interviews with both of them and then we can see the contrasting styles from the two different interviews and their approaches to origami and how they how they're both similar and different, you know? It'd be really cool to see. Is this the right? Lost the crease. Where'd it go? Did I just crease this? Oh, there it is. I was like, what? <laughs> I went to the bottom of that, of the hand. And I was looking for the top. I had passed it already. Yeah, if you, if you guys want to learn how to design, honestly, doing, like, fixing crease patterns, like what Burb's doing, will probably help you a lot. Like, understanding all the flat foldability things can help you read crease patterns. It just gives you more literacy, so, like, more crease pattern literacy. And from there, it'll be, like, way easier to design stuff, I feel. Because you just understand, like, a ton of different transition units, a ton of different... Like, you, you probably, you learn... A fair amount about structure from doing that as you would like folding it. Okay, so this is about as far as I'm gonna go on this side. I'm gonna 
do the I'm gonna match the other side so I don't have to like crease through this thing too much. And from here it's pretty easy because there's not really much on this side. Because the fingers can all just pleat together. And I can leave this. I technically don't even have to fold this in yet, but we will just in case. But yeah, this becomes like the little wrist armor, which is nice. And then we have a little sequence for that later. Also, plants class. Yeah, plants class is really good for, um, like, if you're new. If you're really new, I think as a complement to my crease pattern class, you both learn, like, basic design principles. And it's a lot of, like, the basic box plating stuff you need to think about. And he explains it pretty well. So definitely recommend that. It's a good place to be. And you can join his Discord. And, again, you get the peer feedback. I kind of talked about you get some constructive criticism the people there are really good at understanding that like to help so um, you'll get some good feedback there might also get a little bit roasted there too depending on personality but that's okay <laughs> you can uh, you still learn just just don't take you know just take it as learning constructive feedback you're chilling. Being learnable. Teachable? Teachable. Being teachable is a very valuable skill when you do any kind of activity that has innate difficulty, I found. The more teachable you are, probably the further you'll go. The more stubborn you are, you're get, the more likely you are to uh, limit your own success. So be be, uh, be teachable. <laughs> I took plants class and my designs became more efficient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it really, really helps. And it's free. Like, yo, it's lit. Can't, can't complain about free, am I right? It's gonna be lit. He's at the origami convention. If people ask like me, like, oh boys, you know how to read crease patterns, how to learn to design, I'll be like, oh hey, follow my crease pattern class, and then here's my buddy Brandon over here, and he's got a design class. And you can both <laughs> you can ask us questions about it. The both uh, classes teachers will be there that's kind of exciting right I would I would be excited the homeworks are fun nice that's good. I, I kind of want to remake. Like, I know so much more and I, like can create way better exercises nowadays. But uh, I think that's the... Someone mentioned like that's like the eternal state of a folder. It's like everything you create, you look back a couple years later and you're like, man, it's not that great. <laughs> it's like even with the crease pattern class, you're like, oh, I could improve the class so much. But I think it does its... It's done its purpose. Like a lot of people told me They've learned crease patterns or got into it because they saw it was not as scary of an approach to learn crease patterns. And that that's the goal. You know, it's it's not designed to be like the best comprehensive class on crease patterns ever, but at least it'll it'll get you there. Um, and so I do want to make like a follow up class like uh, with some of the other parts that I think would be useful for people to, to learn. But I don't think I'll like there's not much to continue further from there. Um, most people who do my class and then get into plants class, like that's all they kind of need to 
to start learning on their own. They don't need a hand holding after that. So here's our sword transition. And then let's do, we're gonna leave these shoulder pads thick for now until we collapse the rest. And then we'll do the structure here. Um, Cause yeah, right now it's thick, but it won't be like that for long. Let's do the ridge pleat. And then I should probably get some more water. I've been talking quite a lot. One niece's luge, luge. Luge. Uh, sorry if you said that already, but I couldn't watch the last one and a half hours. What are you folding right now? Are you speedrunning V3 to hype people up for V4? Or are you folding V4 right now? Great question. Yeah, the thumbnail is kind of a bait because I didn't want to post the V4 in the thumbnail. But uh, so <laughs> it's the V3 here, but I'm folding the V4. So this is like the V3 that will be compared to the V4. Uh, and if you've folded or watched a V3 tutorial before, you'll notice the differences already. Um, as we collapse, right? Yeah, we're speed running the version four. Great question. Hoda, hello, Mark, and then Mr. Robert J. Lang. Oh, exactly. And then yeah, then it's like once you once you understand stuff from me in plants classes, go ahead and have a deep dive study of of uh, Robert's design secrets book. And and you'll you'll be able to do anything. Although I don't think Robert is likely to go up to you. I think <laughs> it's more likely you go up to Robert and ask, and and then he'll he'll be very happy to tell you all about, you know, his book or whatever, uh, or to take a picture with him. I think uh, the m most most origami folders are pretty socially awkward, uh, but since we're all socially awkward, like we end up talking to each other eventually. You know what I mean? It's like everyone's comfortable because we're we all realize, or at some point we all realize we're kind of awkward. Like I definitely classify myself as introverted and like awkward, but when I'm there, I'm on the less awkward and more extroverted side just because everyone else is like it's very similar so it's, it's pretty funny also because i'm trying to like film stuff and get content it makes me quite a bit more quite a bit more in my extroverted mood until i go back to my hotel room and like not talk for hours it'd be like that you know y'all know what i mean Okay, so this ridge pleat, right? The advantage here over this one is here we have like a ton of layers that are not really visible. It's kind of hard to see, but they're there versus when we do it on here, there's a couple on this side, but we're going to hide it like this and we're going to fold this in half into here. So you won't see, you'll only see two layers. And then we have this thing, which this becomes our handle. So we use this for this. And we lose a little bit of length in our sword, but it really isn't that much compared to how long it is already. It's already substantially longer than... the other one. I really want that corn to be sharp because it's going to be pretty apparent if it's not. But yeah, since we pre-creased the ridge pleat, like, did you see how easy it was to collapse? So it's this is the same size paper. You know, maybe a couple of millimeters in difference. But you can see we're two units longer than our other sword. And so even when we squish it down a unit for the handle, we're chilling.
what's the differences between v3 and v4 um one of them is that it's asymmetrical the sword is way longer because of that and it uses ridge plate the other hand is empty so the, sh the sheath actually comes from this side and and then the face is different those are like the main differences summed up very quickly okay guys i'm gonna quickly get water so i will be right back um, maybe you guys can go get a, a water break yourself really quickly. I'm just going to put this guy like right here. So it's a reference. I'll be right back. It'll be like two minutes or less. All right, we got our water. <clears throat> cool. Back to foliage. Hour and a half. Actually, we're making pretty good progress. Um, I think some of the smaller details, like the finger collapse and the shoulder plates, are going to take like an hour on their own. So the general collapse is going well, but uh, despite that, <laughs> we, we still have a lot to do. Um, okay, so next part is like this section, which is for the waistcoat and back. So let's actually start just from uh, doing something like, like this. We're just going to grab this whole flap. And this will be the easier way to approach it and then go upwards into the face. The face collapse is also going to be a little bit of a challenge because well you'll you'll you'll, you'll see why it's a little bit of a challenge. We're going to really need our tweezers there. Um, again, it's a partial 192nd. So that's kind of self-explanatory at that point, but, uh, yeah, fun, fun stuff. It works, though. Works well. Okay, so let's get these pleats out of the way, too. Oh, the one thing we're, we didn't do on the head is the neck transitions, which we should probably do uh, before we do everything else. So we're, we'll collapse this. We won't do the full face yet. We'll do the pleats here, and then we'll do the face. I think that'll be the order of collapse. Like it doesn't matter too much. It's more I'm just thinking what's going to be easier later because we have to pull apart the model a bit um, to do those pleats, and I don't want to pull apart the model when the face is already done because it'll kind of. It just it just won't be as fun, you know what I mean? Okay, and then here is another pleat. And this is where our partials will be. for the chest.
check it for defect, be clean. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. The, this side collapses a little bit differently, but we'll at least get those same pleats. So. It's all very fidgety, but doing it like this helps make it a little bit less fidgety, at least for my preference, because then it holds itself in place on the other side while we work on this side. All right, and here it goes back down. because we do partials on that side as well. Okay, and we're about at the same spot here, so let's push up into here. We're getting close to the face now. And then since we did those bottom pleats, it's pretty easy to flip over to this side. It'd be fine. And then another set of stretches into here, which is the bottom of our face flap. What paper size do you usually or currently use? And what is the smallest viable size? Another great question. So um, this one is currently about 64 or 65 centimeters. I think this one's 65. It kind of varies, or um, yeah, I think it's 65. It kind of depends on how well I cut out the square, whether it's like 63 centimeters, 64 centimeters, or 65. Generally, with this paper, I use this size. Uh, that was the same thing with the Wenjo version. It's about this size as well. Um, ideally, for humanoid models, you can get away with using a meter-sized paper, and it it looks probably you can probably do more shaping. Um, like here's the pirate, right? This is from a meter. So this is the difference in size between a meter, and I think I think these are the same grid size too. So here's a f 65 centimeter, and then here's a meter. So you can see that on the pirate, I even have this really tiny detail in here, and then these are all pretty small details, which probably wouldn't look as good on a 65 centimeter paper. It's definitely still possible, but probably not as clean or defined. Same thing with the pistol so I, I recommend bigger however I actually have the original samurai version 3 and the small one So, and I don't know why I gold foiled this one. It's, it, I was young, right? It, I don't, I think it looks nasty, but it was an experiment. But basically this one is uh, 30 centimeters compared to 65 centimeters. Um, so this is definitely possible. I think it looked better without the gold leafing actually. The face would still be possible in terms of this face. However, with this face, I don't think it would be possible because again, it is a partial 190 second. So all you got to do is take, you know, if you do a 30 centimeters divided by 192, and then that's how small in centimeters it is. Is that right? Is that, 
I don't, you could do the math. I don't know if that math is correct, right? But <laughs> you can do the math and, and look at a, a, a ruler and see how small you have to be, how small it's going to be to decrease. Um, yeah, it's, uh, if, if it's your first go, probably not. Like, I think I could pull it off and it would take a long time to get it clean. But that's because I've done like 10 of these samurais over the years, right? Or more. But if it's your first samurai or you're, you know, not as experienced with these, it probably not advised. I totally think, you know, using smaller papers is possible. It's just, it's guaranteed to not look as good unless if you're like super experienced. And at that point, you should just use, if you're really experienced, you probably use larger paper. So it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's up, Seraph? Hello, hello. Sorry, miss, I keep missing some chats, guys. I Like I read over them and I read the next one and I forgot <laughs> a different one. So my bad, my bad. And Silverio, I think uh, you said you were folding something right now. Wanna wanna share with us what you're folding? If you're still here. And anyone else, if you guys are folding along too, or you're working on projects, you know, let let me know um, what you're doing. I think uh, Niz kind of told us he's breeding moths. You know, so that, that's pretty interesting. I'll try to keep it origami related, but that like insects is kind of origami related because we do a lot of that. Um, so if it's like remotely origami related or if it can tie into origami, feel free to share. Uh, if it's completely off topic, maybe not for the stream, <laughs> but, uh, you know, like TV shows, anime is fine. You can talk about that one. Cause I like anime and two, because we can use it for origami. I don't know what would be off topic. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just as long as it's remotely on topic, we're chill. Okay, so here's the face. We have another one unit flap here. Being careful not to mush anything here. It's pretty easy to mush, but then it makes the rest of the claps kind of harder. So just taking my time, following my pre creases. And it gets increasingly, or it gets a little bit more fidgety when uh, we get closer to the hat because it's defined so tight up here. Bodo Dwarf. Ooh, nice. So, oh, dual sword plate armor. That's right, Silverio. So guys, the dual sword plate armor does not exist physically yet, but uh, I worked with um, Silverio a little bit to create the crease pattern. That would work. And he is bringing it to life. He's bringing it into the physical world. So that's gonna be pretty cool. Definitely look out for that one. Bodo Dwarf sounds like a fun fold too. I don't know if Bodo's still here, but I'm sure he would be happy to know that someone's folding to Bodo Dwarf. Or the bow dwarf, I should say. Um, lunatic origami folding Sam's. Uh, oh, I'm I'm a try. Sisonia breverostris. Basically, a rock shrimp. Oh, cool. Those taste good. I think. Are, are those the ones that they use for like sushi? Like this? No, no, that's a uh, spotted shrimp. Well, I'm sure rock shrimp tastes good too. I think I feel like I've had rock shrimp before. But very nice. That's a cool shrimp design. Sam's uh, stuff is pretty, pretty, like, was he focuses on anatomic, and he focuses on getting it anatomically correct, which is really really cool. Um, so yeah, that's quite a massive design, for sure. Okay, so we're missing every, or we got everything except for this last face, or. Yeah, face pleat. Or this is technically for the helmet. Extended helmet pleat. It's 
It's part of the head. Which um, it's kind of fighting me with this crease right here. But we shall get it. Okay, we got one side, and once we get the other side, we'll be good. This is actually pretty similar. There's a flap like this on the version 3 as well. That's uh, equally annoying to pull out and collapsing. Does anyone have a crease pattern for the guy riding a dragon <laughs> in pink double tissue? Oh my goodness. That's okay. You can uh, paint it afterwards or something if you don't want it to be pink. <laughs> or you can uh, Photoshop the color. Draw a mask for everything pink and then change the color. <laughs> um, the crease pattern for Guy Riding the Dragon, why not Obelisk Dragonite, it was a one headed dragon. Um, yeah, that was a. Was that a, uh, one of the Korean designers? I think did that. There's a couple of those dragon riders. They're really cool. I, I don't have the crease pattern on me at the moment. I think it was posted somewhere. I can't remember his name. Maxi is shaping similar to the other samurai versions for the samurai. Uh, yeah, a little bit, but it's I do more. <laughs> I make it better basically. So there's a lot more shaping done. Uh, a lot better posing, at least what I will do. But uh, it's and the face is different. So well, I guess the shaping is quite different then. But um, at least for what I would recommend, there's a lot more to do. So yeah, if you compare my fold of the Samurai version 4 to this one, which is the Samurai version 3 with the DLC stuff, uh, it's going to be quite different. But the thing is, if I folded this exact one again, it's going to look a lot different as well. I will add way more to even this refold. So it's not as much of a, like a change in shaping, it's more that I've gotten better at shaping and I'll do more to it. Um, okay, so we have the face flaps done. They sit like this. And there, it's not done yet. As you can see, this is like way too long. There's another transition here. But before I do that transition, I'm going to do these pleats because I don't want to, uh, or I want to do it this first so I don't have to spread out the layers after I do the face. So pre-creasing we're just going to do something like, like this. When I did it on my first fold I did this afterwards and it wasn't very clean. It was more because I wasn't sure if this was what I was going to do with the neck. But now that I know this is what we're doing for the neck, we can do it a little earlier. I advanced a lot since you like. Oh uh, yeah, I pretty much just finished this section. Boys, can you you can get one more flat for the chest using the paper under the neck? By the way, one more pleat for the chest using the paper under the neck. Oh, you're right. I can just pull it here. Although, Mark, you saw the shaping I did. I don't think it would be possible with the angle I twisted the neck at. The reason why there's this many three layers was so I could do something like that. But I think even still, you're right, I could do one more pleat. However, technically, if we compare it to this one, it's the same amount of pleats. Because there's only two, these ones are fake right here. This one right here, it's a fake pleat. But you're, you're right, Mark, I, I could. Am I going to? Pro probably not. But, uh, okay, so for here, let's actually spread squash. I'm reaching in. We're just going to do it through all the layers first. Because that will pre-crease our transition units. And then I'm going to open up the model. And then switch the layers to not all be grouped up like this. Maybe we should do that on here too. This one's a little bit more difficult because it's a, uh, it's like right here. 
Actually, no, we won't do it on this one. I think this one's easier to free fold the transition units. And from here, we now we can open up the layers. So this is what I mean by opening up the layers. Like we're, we're actually opening up a lot of it. And I don't want it to pull on the face over on this side. Like it, it didn't really do too much on the, the first time I folded it, but I just thought it would be more annoying if I had to do this afterwards. Bush, um, Ollie, what's the best place to buy larger paper that ships to Europe? Um, probably origami shop or any local paper shops. I know there's a lot in Europe. Like you can get Wenjo rice, I think, anywhere in Europe. Obelisk has another Dragon Knight with just one person on it. Oh, Simon, you can put varnish on it after it's folded. How can I make my paper look like it's oiled without it being wet? Yeah, varnish would work. It'll definitely be a, like, it might be a little uneven, so you gotta be careful. And one sec, guys, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I wanted to wash my hands. They're getting a little greasy because uh, it's very warm in Arizona. Outside right now, it's like uh, 40 Celsius or more. It's pretty warm here. Okay, uh, more questions. Nigel Rhodes, hello. Thank you for joining. You wish you were this good. No, you do not wish that. You will wish you are even better. Do not set your goals too low. But thank you. Thank you. I know what you mean. Han Yu Song is the name of the designer of the drag. Oh, yes. That's right. That's the one you're looking for, um, Wyatt. That's the... Uh, Niz says, boys, you should check for insects outside. Um, it's too hot for me to look outside right now. But no, there's there's tons. There's, there's tons. I, I do look for them when I'm outside roaming around. We got reptiles too, which are really cool. Uh, but in the city, you don't get too much outside of like the the large crickets and cockroaches. Uh, you have to go a little bit out more towards less populated neighborhoods to find like the beetles that are cooler to look at. Or you can just drive like a, two hours to the Sonoran Desert and you can get some giant centipedes, tarantulas, you know, the fun stuff. There's there's a lot of fun stuff over here. I've seen uh, some longhorn beetles before, but those those guys like to hide pretty well, so you don't see them very often in the city. Okay, so we got the transition unit on one side. I do have to sync this again, but I want it kind of intact for when I do. The cleaner these transition units get, the less the paper crumples up when I'm pleating through everything. So, or re-pleating everything. And the cleaner it is, the normally the better. Almost always the better. Okay. We got both sets of those transition units down. So yeah, things like these partials, this is where more time is gonna come from collapse. I think the big collapses are the easy ones to do, and then these small things are what actually take up time. 
So that, now that we have those, I'm going to just do this to like crease it really well. And then we can go ahead and sink this top flap in. And then we'll do the same thing for the bottom one. I probably don't even have to do this. I could transition unit. I, I can transition it like along these pleats, but we'll just do it like this because why not? Uh, it works pretty easily for this transition. After rain. Uh, it's not going to rain here for a while, dude. <laughs> I, I mean, it's a, it's a desert. We won't have a single drop of rain for like two months. Watch out for giant... Yeah, exactly. You don't want to get bit by those. But they, they're really cool if you see them. Like, it's cool, and then it's really scary, especially if you're close up. Because, man, are they bigger than you would ever want them to be. Like... Sure, I've seen them in videos and stuff, but man, it's different in person. Like, oh my goodness, they're scary. Okay, I messed up the clothes sink a little bit, but we can reconstruct it as best we can. Other side, we're gonna try not to lose the closed sink here. Okay, this side worked a bit better than the former. I think I, I changed it accidentally into a full sink. Let me try not to do that. There we go. So we have all that effort for just that. I, I know, I know. But we got one more. So. This one, there's a lot less stuff going on though. So it shouldn't be too bad. And these ones, I can free fold the transitions because I, I kind of know how they work on the crease pattern. I don't even have to look. I've just done this so many times. And since it's close to the edge, even easier. And this one can be a little bit less clean because it's going to be hidden on the underside. We'll still try to make it clean if we can. Just because overall it helps. that we'll start with the same kind of idea as the other one where we do a spread or we do a squash fold here but along all the layers That way we can set ourselves up for success and cleanliness. For the rest. So I think these look a lot nicer when they're clean. Even though you can technically just mush them. A 
Why mush when you can just be clean, right? Oh, Hermerson, thank you for joining the membership. Look at that. Thank you, man. Uh, there should be a community post that you have access to to join the Discord, which will grant you access to all the premium content, and you get to see what this looks like. <laughs> so go ahead, check that out, and then come back to the stream. You should be chilling. My paperwork is always crooked. Oh. Meanwhile, in Canada, centipede of five centimeters. Lol. I think those still have a bite, don't they? Do, do they nick this? I'm not sure. They only Oh, they only live for two to three. I see. How do you send pictures? Uh, you can send them into Discord, and then if you want me to check it out, you can uh, do that. You can't send pictures in the chat, though. Yeah, now Hydra, if you want to send me a picture, send it in the members Discord, and then let me know when you send it, and I'll look. Niz, all centipedes can bite, but I'm not sure if the ones here have enough mouth parts to pierce human skin. Ah, gotcha. The ones down here definitely do. <laughs> it's like, uh, they're pretty scary. Like their mandibles or whatever it's called, they're like a whole centimeter long. And they're fast. They're so fast. Actually, this last plate, I might leave it like that because I think it'll be cleaner to tuck all the layers in together than to do them separately. All right, how long did that, just this part take? I don't know, maybe like 15 minutes, but that back pleat is done. Sorry I wasn't talking a little bit. I was like mega focused there. So very, I rarely see any insects besides flies and mosquitoes from where I'm at. Ah, man, mosquitoes are really annoying. Um, you might just not be looking in the right places. Hey, there you go. Rotten logs. Um, in my other place, though, we have these occasionally in, like, rivers and stuff. A little toe biter. A giant water bug. That's also another thing you don't want to get bit by. I've heard they're very painful as well. Are there ants? Oh, yeah, we have fire ants where I'm from. Those are Those are nasty, too, man. Like, the bites don't hurt too much, but then a day later, oh man, it's itching so bad. Especially if you get, like, normally you'll get, like, five bites. Like, you never just get one. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of fire ants all around. That's nasty. We have a ton of ants in Houston. Oh, yeah, you have fire ants, too. Those hurt a lot, yeah. What's the Discord and how to get... Oh, I thought you were already in there. Um, Hydra, look for the... You're a YouTube member, right? I think that's that indicator says you're a YouTube member. Uh, 
or is that just a yeah you're a member okay so go to the community page so go to my channel and then um there's a community tab and then there's a post there with a link um, and look look for the members only post oh there's a membership tab sorry not the community tab the membership tab and if you scroll down enough there should be a discord link oh is it only set to 24 hours fire ants kill no yeah uh, um, the only way that you get killed by them is if you had allergic reaction, I think. Um, let me let me renew the membership link for you. Um, or Nahydra, you can DM me on Discord. I, I don't want to always post a maybe I'll just do a permanent link for here. We'll 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 do a we'll do a permalink just for members. Let me make sure this is a membership post though. Visibility, all channel members. Okay, I just posted it. Let me know if you can see it. It should be good. Live in a big city so you see rats. Oh, rat! rats are also scary, man. Because they're like fast and dark. It's, you get jump scared. Okay, what were we doing? We finished the back pleats. Oh, by the way, this is designed by Kota Ime. Imai. Kota Imai. I think in real life, the, the biter part of the toe biter is probably larger than that. Avoid those. Avoid getting bit by those at all costs. Okay, so we did that. So now we can do the face. So the face... And our arms are actually kind of in the way. So what I like to do is right at the arm joint, I do a valley fold to the side like this. So then it sticks out like that. And that makes it a little bit easier to manage. This side is a bit, there's just more paper in general, so we gotta be a little bit more careful with this reverse fold or this valley fold. And then from the back, you can see that our closed neck joint area covers the reverse fold stuff that we did underneath here. It's like that wasn't very clean, but it's it's all hidden away by that. And then there's another one that goes underneath it for more pleats, which is pretty fun. But now that that's out of the way, we can kind of just manage This, I think this is all manageable. If all else, I can put like a clip here to hold this in place, but I think I think we're okay, at least to do the face, because we want it open for the face, because this part's a little bit tricky. But the first part here is there's a transition that I pre-creased. If you weren't here yet, basically I pre-creased a thing right here. And what this does is this splits, this starts to split the uh, one flap into two smaller ones. It's 
It's almost like the same thing as the partials we did for those pleats in the back. It's just underneath existing points so that instead of getting a full set of pleats, we just get a set of points. But it's basically the same kind of squash fold. And when you do it correctly, it looks like this. So you can see we have, in, instead of on the other side where the pleats go all the way through the model, we have it at points. So the only partial are these little tips right here. And so these are partial 96. And then we're going to divide this one again, which will become a partial 192nd. So up here, we don't really have to do anything. This becomes our nose. Probably shouldn't have uh, folded that actually, but um, it's fine to get it out of the way. And this part is tricky because this is partial 192nd. It's a little bit funky. Let me turn on the, I hope my camera doesn't freak out, but I'm gonna turn on the autofocus so that we can hold it very close to the camera. Or maybe I should just change the focus to, I think the autofocus still won't pick it up. Change the focus. So we can see here, and this is good time to use tweezers. So let me get, I normally just use these tweezers, but I have another pair. Let me see if those ones, be helpful. Oh, by the way, guys, Origami USA convention. If you find me, you get a sticker. Actually, now that I have the, uh, let me show these off a little bit. As I'm grabbing my tweezers, they're in the same box. Here's my tweezers. Put this to the side. There's some stuff in there I don't want to leak. You, you see the resemblance a little bit? Not bad, right? There we go. Bunny girl ones. There's enough. I'm pretty sure I'll be able to give I don't have one for everyone, but at least there's, if you come up to me, I'm pretty sure you'll, you'll be able to get one. Uh, Cause I know some people there are like, probably not interested. Like uh, there's quite a few people above the age of 50 that might not be interested in a bunny girl. Uh, I don't blame them, <laughs> but uh, stickers, pretty fun. Okay this back so these ones are gonna help us I think with this squash fold so sometimes I pre-crease this squash fold I probably should so I'll, let me let me pre-crease this squash fold it's it's gonna be a little bit easier to do There's this one origami I did by accident and it turned out epic. Dude, it's always, always nice when that happens, right? Honestly, the samurai was kind of like that. The, the one with the, the first version V3 with the face. Looks like we got some nice inset conversation going here, guys. I like it. Keep it up. Um, while boys, your channel blew up in subscribers a few months ago, I was doing your samurai. You only had 2000. Um, I, ha I think I passed 2000 a while ago. I think I was maybe at 5,000 at the start of the year. I have a tracker. We could, we could track it. Hold on. Let me, let me pull up my phone. Let me go to my notes. I've been tracking my journey since I started. 
Not not too many people have seen this, but um, fall 2016, zero subscribers. It took me like half a month or uh, like a whole season to get to 100, right? It took a couple years to get to 1,000. And then I didn't think I even had my YouTube going yet. That was just Instagram. Yeah, so April 2019th. I had 700. You can see here in 2018, I failed at IOIO. Um, Twitch, like 100. I, I tracked it all the way. Um, I hit 1,000 subscribers in 2019 in August. And that was following the Giant Samurai video. And then this past year... Um, well, this, I, I wasn't as active in tracking from 2021 to 2022, I don't think, but last year I had three and a half thousand at January, had some TikTok and stuff blow up and some video collapse and stuff like that. Samurai got into offline TV videos, um, 4,000 January, um, by June I had 5,000 on YouTube, got on the TV show. 2022, I won the IOIO silver medal. And then in May, I had 7,000. So November is, oh yeah, so I was at, I was already at 6,000 at the end of 2021. Um, so we're, we're steadily climbing. I think with more content, I'll be able to gain some more uh, at a more rapid pace. But it's it's like, it's been like a, a, a 2x curve, which is not bad for growth. But, um, it's been a journey, guys. It's been a journey, for sure. Okay, we pre-creased that. Hopefully, I pre-creased it strong enough. But let's use these to just start opening up the pocket for our squash fold. I I've been at this for a long time. But I, I guess it's not too long. Is that six years? Coming up on si six years? This YouTube channel, though, I think it started in 2014. But I, I wasn't tracking anything yet, and I didn't really have origami stuff on here. Face tutorial 2. Yeah, let's go. So, yeah, Mark, here we go. This is the, this is probably the hardest part of the collapse here. So, the harder close sink is the top one, I think. Is it the top one or is it the bottom one? I forget, but we got a, these two little flaps here. We have to close sync them. One of them is, I think the top one is harder because it's uh, more flimsy over here versus on the bottom we have more paper. So I like to start this by pulling, like if I can, I don't want to reach underneath if I don't have to. So I start by pulling it apart a little bit just this flap so that hopefully I can turn that valley fold into a mountain fold. And once I'm once I get that then that's that's like the main goal of this sink. Okay, I cannot reach it. So we're going to use our uh, tweezers. I'm going to use these ones cuz they're a little bit thinner to push underneath. Ideally you have like a a, a a thinner tool that poke, but I don't have one at the moment. Here's our tweezers. Try to find where it is. Maybe I should use the back of the tweezers so I can press against a solid edge. And then try to turn that valley into a mountain without ruining the rest of the Squash fold because we need the rest of it to remain intact for it to close properly. So you can see the left side is closed properly, the right side is too open. So we lost structure there a little bit. That's okay. That means we just have to carefully, carefully push it back in. And if we crease strongly enough, normally it goes back in, but sometimes it doesn't. And then we have to recollapse the rest of the structure. And the cleaner you get this in the middle, 
then the more likely it is to look like teeth when you shape the face. So that's why you, you don't want to mush this because you don't want to lose the chance to have teeth um, in your fold. But it looks like that was actually a pretty clean closed sink, right? And so even though the face, the mouth line is actually this long, uh, after we shape it, it's only going to be like, it's going to end right here. So right where the teeth are is where it's going to end. But now we need to do the other, this flap. We have to close sink this one. And even though I said this one's not as hard, it's because it's the second one, it sometimes can be. But this one, we have this part to grab. So we can actually maybe push the flap open to get that closed sink started. And then we can gently mount and fold that line and then hopefully push in the flap without even needing our tweezers. And there we go, we got it. So that is just practice and dexterity with your fingernails being really careful to manipulate a 190 second closed sink. There you go. And so obviously the line's not perfect, but that's okay. Cause it doesn't, it's not, it's not going to be basically, but these are our lips. So later down the line, we can shape these into a mouth. That's the face. And our, we'll do a little bit more on the face. So the nose is starts up here. And to do the nose, I actually want to thin this out. So I, I swivel fold this whole thing down. Let me grab it a little bit better. I'm trying to get an 11.25 degree angle. Is that 11.25 or is that still 22.5? Just kidding, that's a 22.5 degree angle. And ideally this part lays flat while the rest of it, you fold it back, you get that shape. It's okay that this isn't lying flat, it just adds more. It's, so it's technically a mask, not a deep, like a samurai face mask, not a, um, real human face. So that actually makes our job a little bit easier since we can have like extra lines across the face without it looking too fake. Now from here, when I do more shaping in the face, I'm actually going to thin the nose out even more. Um, and that's going to round it out. So with tweezers, I would do something like, like that to thin it out more and to make it 3D. But for now, we don't need to. The only structural thing we need to do here is to, this point right here doesn't really line up with where we want the cheekbone. So I'm just gonna tuck that corner in. And that tucked in corner kind of helps us lock our nose in place, just like this. I use both printer and kami paper to make one origami. Wow, that's scary. You said this was only collapsing any percent. Yes. Uh, what TV show was I on? I was on Meet Your Maker on Discovery Plus. It was a full, it was a paper art competition. And a lot of people said I got robbed because I got eliminated the first round, sadly. Uh, but I think it was made, it was like apples to oranges. Like uh, most other people they did origami from like flowers and stuff. The contestants were amazing, by the way. I'm friends with them still on Instagram. It was just like the show format was kind of whack for origami because they only gave me like three hours, I think. So I couldn't really do anything advanced. But I wet folded an anglerfish and the judges didn't really know what anglerfish were. And that was like their reason for why my piece was disqualified or why I was eliminated from the show first. It's because they didn't know what an anglerfish was. And I was like, what? <laughs> It's like, no, but that's okay. At least I, I got paid a little bit and I was on a TV show. So that's lit. No complaints there. 
cool experience. Not on Disney Plus, on Discovery Plus, but thanks. Yeah, thanks, Mark. I think the show is still on there. Pre-crease into squash fold. I know, right? I normally don't pre-crease squash folds, but that one you do. What's your all-time favorite origami? Um, I think normally it's whatever I'm currently working on. So right now it's my Samurai version 4, which is what we're working on here. Just because I'm very happy with the result. Um, boys, I remember you DM'd me before origami Dan even existed, asking me if you want... Oh my goodness, is that back then from Fearless Flourishes? Was it with Fearless Flourish that we were going to play Fortnite? That's wild, dude. We go... Way back then, yeah, that's crazy. Nice, nice to see you again, Wyatt. Uh, called it Little Horse with Big Wings, nice. I'm gonna hop off nice, see you guys. Thanks, Hoda, for watching, thank you, thank you. Simon, did you add extra flaps for the face this time? Uh, so yeah, the face is the same face as the alone model. So I don't have that one on me right now because it's packed away, but the crease pattern is on my website. It's also called the Generic Man 24 Grid. Um, tweezers are the best. What show again? Um, Mark posted it in the chat. Simon, bruh. Pick locks are great help. Ooh, that sounds nice. They're cheaters. Even I know what an ang angler fish is. They need to do it. I know, right? So it was, uh, it was this one, right? So I folded this one and I even displayed it. Like I felt my art concept was great. I won't spoil too much, but basically it was like modern looking origami juxtaposed to traditional origami it's like this had a nice stand the other one was on a masu box and it was like in a it's like eating a smaller fish is what i created i created a little scene but they're like what's an angler fish i was like yo i even color changed it too i was like uh i don't know i was happy with it though i was really happy i think uh, oh here here it is so here's here's the one well actually no this one isn't the one from the show this is the test one but like, it's color changed. It's like, I don't know. Oh well. I think, you know, it's, I'm, I'm not haunted by it too much, but all my friends that watched it were like very upset. I had a good time though. They flew me out to Hollywood for free, so, and I got paid a little bit, so you know, I I was like, since I was eliminated first, I was I would I would just stayed in the the hotel, <laughs> the rest of the week and like, hung out, and folded origami and ate food. Do it. It was it was a good time for me at least. So, um, the uh, Rapunzel design was actually the second. That was the uh, that was going to be for the next round. Uh, which it, maybe it's good because I don't know the Rapunzel was just an okay design. I don't think I would have won, but I think it would have been cool to see. What did other contestants do? They were, did some really cool stuff. There's one paper cut sculpture of a bird that was really realistic. Um, there was a f and a two flower paper flower makers, and their flowers are really amazing. Although one of them had a mistake and like part of their flower fell off so i thought that might be the one to beat but i guess not if they don't know what an angler fish is but but all the contestants are really really great um artists i i i, I love them all um and i don't blame the judges it's fine <laughs> it, it's kind of a meme but okay so for the face, after I do that, I do like a half pleat here so that the nose reaches just about where the mouth is. And that's because it's going to stick out a little bit like this, and I'm going to shorten the tip to round it out. So we actually want it kind of low so that the eye level will be right here. And then that's where the eyes are going to be. Uh, and this we're going to tuck into the, like this, because we're going to use this as the start of our eye sockets. Right around here is where we're going to start to define our eyes. Not now, but much later. And then this top flap is going to be the top of our 
Samurai Helmet, which will be like sticking out this way. And then it'll connect to here for the horns. But the thing is, so one of the big problems with faces is that I see is a lot of people make their face way too large. So even though this is really small, it's too big. So like the chin is too long, the cheeks are too wide. So normally I think what I would want to do, and it's okay for me to make it a little bit bigger because it's a mask, but like this is way too big is I actually fold another half pleat where the chin would be. Let's try to make it a little bit more even. And then we're going to fold in the face. And this is more shaping, but I just want to show you guys the idea so that if you start working on this, the the thing that will look the most wrong is the face. If you do the face badly, it doesn't matter how good you do everything else, that it's going to it's going to look really not as good. Um which is the it's the risk, it's a high risk high reward, right? You do a good face, it complements everything, it looks really good. If you do a bad face, it it really ruins the whole model. So take care to get it right. So even, even this is still like a little too wide. The chin is a little bit too wide. So I would have to go and fold it like a little bit more, which is why shaping for me takes so long on these because you really need to nail the correct shape of the face properly so that nothing is too large. So even when I thin that, now the nose is too big, right? So that's why I'll go in later and shorten the nose and thin it out more and do a whole bunch of stuff to get that correct. But that's like the gist of the face if you want. Uh, you can always retry if you didn't glue anything yet. But yeah, make make those faces small, guys. You need to be really small. Like this is way too large. Like if you look at yourself and you think about like how big your head is, it's like the rest of it, it makes the rest of it look stubby, basically. We don't, we don't want that to happen. That's uh, shaping tips with boys. But... Enough of that, we are going to <laughs> do this transition unit. So this is our last set of partials besides over here, but we don't need to worry about these yet. Um, let's do these partials first. Actually, no, let's fold this out. We won't do the partials here, but we'll get the flap out and then do the partials here. So here's a ton of space. And so I am going to, this one is kind of an interesting collapse because we're going to fold a middle flap and then invert it. So here's our middle flap right here and then we need the rest of it like this. And middle flaps don't always collapse all the way flat until the very end or if you shift the axis. So it's going to be a little bit of a umbrella till then. And we opened a little bit too many layers. The other contestants would lose if there were no scissors rule, right? Yeah, I was the only one who had one sheet of paper, <laughs> which is, you know, I thought it'd be impressive, but I mean, I think everyone was impressed. It just, you are like, What's a what's an angler fish? I was like, huh? Wait, did I not pre-crease this part? Oh, I, I forgot. I did it like this. Okay. I thought it went all the way to the edge for some reason. It does not go all the way to the edge. Bring this to here. It, the first time I did this, I had the flap go to the edge, and then I modified it to not go to the edge, so. Forgot the modification. I'm like not looking at my crease pattern right now. So I have a general, like I just finished the other one not too long ago. So in general, I have it 
in my head since everything is pre creased. Yeah, if I ever get on a TV show again, I'm gonna pick a topic that's like more safe or more like better known, I guess, in the media world. And then um, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go all out. I think the anglerfish was a little too simple. I think I could push something harder in three hours. So we'll, we'll make it more worth it next time for sure. But yeah, fun, fun experience. I understand how c contest shows are made now. <laughs> okay. So this is eventually going to become a partial, I think. Is that how I did it? I think this is wrong, actually. I think it's, uh... I think the stretch is like this. But we'll, we'll fix it in um, shaping, because basically this has to pull high enough into the uh, into the leg armor. This is like the leg armor. Oh, maybe it's like this. This looks okay. Um, yeah, and then that's how it works. Now this middle flap, right? Normally you would do something like uh, fold this down and then fold the rest of it back on itself. Or something like that but for here we're actually going to invert the flap so it points backwards and technically that would color change this flap too so the way to color change middle flaps normally like you think you can't color change it but you can it'll be in the back um, because you what you do is you would invert it this way and so i actually did that on one of my more recent designs which is not released yet um, but you guys will see that also at the origami convention it's not released yet because I was getting a sponsor for the video, which I have successfully gotten to sponsor. So after the convention, that video will come out. It's about origami design and it's sponsored. Just lit. Make it work. We're making moves, guys, slowly. Um, but that's pretty exciting. But yeah, this would be color changed if this paper had two colors. And it's still a little bit wacky to collapse, but you can do a little bit more with it back here. And as long as you get everything else to be all right. And it's gonna be an angled, it's gonna be on an angle when it collapses naturally good because we're actually swinging this flap to the other side and I think I s stretched it a little bit too far hold on lost our flap here. It's not good. There we go. And I'm trying not to mush it, but it's it's it gets pretty thick down here. You have to turn it the right way. I actually get it to collapse nicely. 
but it turns some layers on the inside there. But the nice thing is, is it doesn't overlap through all the layers on this side, so this flap gets a little bit thinner. It's just a huge mess down here. But not bad of a mess. So, there you go. Let's make sure our shoulder is in the right place still. It has a chance to like pull down the shoulder a little bit. I think we're okay. And I'm gonna reset the focus now that we don't have to do the small thing anymore. It's looking good. Let's reset their focus. And then I will look at the chat that I missed. Okay, we're back. Where's the crease pattern for the anglerfish? It is not public, I don't think. Because it's gonna be released in the Origami Darren book, the diagrams, yay. Whenever that happens, oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> sorry. It's been in a, it's a, been planned for the book for like two years now. But Nicholas Lowe is putting in really good effort to complete the book. So it's going to be like the Origami Darren book works of Nicholas Lowe. And the diagrams for the anglerfish will be in there. Couldn't they Google with an angler? I know, right? Well, it was all at, you know, within a span of time. So I guess they didn't know. Uh, next time you're in a show, give me a shout out, lol. I think they would cut it out. I, I tried to shout out myself a little bit. They had a plug for me, but like my actual shout out was a. Uh, they they cut that from the show. <laughs> I was I was trying to use it to like, hey guy, you know, there's a lot of more advanced origami out there. Check out these people. Here's some people that inspire me, and they cut some of that out, lol. Um. Like I mentioned, like Robert Lang, Joseph Wu, Kimi Satoshi, but that's okay. Um, that's thick. Yes. It'll get thinner, Silverio. Just trust. True. Okay, I'll have to leave. Bye. Thanks for watching, Ollie. Seraph, you're back. Hey, welcome back, Seraph. There's a Darren book. Is Oh, right. Uh, well, it was a secret. It's not really a secret, no. It's just, will it, will it happen? Question mark. It's supposed to happen. It'll it'll happen one day. We have a... Maybe I shouldn't share that part yet. But yeah, look out for that in the future. It, it'll be really exciting when it happens. Uh, because of who's publishing it, kind of. And anglerfish diagrams. Did you have a teacher? A teacher for... Uh, what do you mean by teacher, Nydra? Like um, in general, like for origami? No, I taught myself. And then I've learned a lot from my friends that I've made along the way, like Mark. Mark's taught me a lot of things. But in terms of origami and getting to the level of designing, I, I learned that all on my own. But there's always more to learn, which is why I love just talking with people, getting feedback, and learning lots more. Okay, so we did that, <laughs> right? This part, it's it's a little thick, but it's, it's okay. All this is going to be hidden by this thing right here, which is going to swivel upwards. Um, I think this unit's wrong, though, so I'm going to have to change that, but in the crease pattern. Um... Or maybe I should just leave it as two big flaps and let people figure it out <laughs> on their own. Um, let's do this part now. This part is also a little bit tricky because we have to spread the layers a little bit. But we do have kind of a nice sequence for this. Or not sequence, but we have a nice transition unit on the other parts. Oh, actually, before we do that, let's do the same squash fold thing we did on the top pleats so that way it'll be a little bit easier for us on the transition units
take that and then push this guy inside. And the reason why we have to do some interesting transitions here is because if you notice, if we just did our pleat here, the top pleat would cover up our pleat like that. So we don't want that to happen. So we fold this one down here and then we shift the other one down. But we need to open up this to get this part collapsed. And then this start part starts collapsed like normal too, but then it transitions downwards. But thankfully, since we pre-creased the other one, the transition for this one is a lot easier than it normally would be. Okay, so we got the top pleat down. Hi, I'm back. What's up, Simon? Oh, that was a little while ago. Sorry. Imagine one of my designs make it. Uh, Boyce's line, there's no Dan book. Right, yeah, there's no, there's no Dan book. <laughs> Origami, cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think I answered that question about teacher at work. Yeah, I didn't have a teacher. So, uh, okay. This is, I, I was watching like a crime, thought, or it was like a, one of those crime psychology YouTube videos where they talk about like, they, they show like an interview with like a suspect and they like psychoanalyze them. And so like one of the people they psychoanalyzed, they were like, um, oh, you know, this person, they they were like, they were guilty, but they were, they were doing this thing. They had some like mental issues in their reasoning, but basically they were like, oh, you know, this person was trying to help the other person because they wanted to give, maybe this is a bad example, but like they wanted to give something that they didn't have themselves or, or, or so, something along that line. But, like, because they didn't have this, uh, background, they wanted, or since they didn't have help or, you know, whatever it is, basically as when they got older, that's the one thing they wanted to give to everyone. I, okay. That, not the exact same example, but I think that's part of why I started my YouTube channel. Like, I wish I had a teacher that could teach me all these things. Cause it was, it was hard for me to learn. It took me a while. I had to put in a lot of effort. I wish I had a teacher and all these resources. And that's why that's like the psychological reasoning behind why I um made a channel specifically to like like basically that crease pattern class where it's the whole goal was to help people learn crease patterns in a less intimidating way than what i had to do to learn it um and because i didn't have it that's like the driving reasoning behind trying to provide it to others i don't know i don't know if that makes any sense to you guys but maybe that's makes sense a little bit yeah I didn't I didn't have a teacher but I became the teacher okay, so this transition unit basically between all these flaps we can just swivel fold We have to do two swivel folds.
Actually, there, there's a couple ways to get this pleat in the right position, but we can do it this way. We don't really use the other pleats for anything else. So this, this will work totally fine. I think this is actually different than what I show on the crease pattern, uh, but it's okay. I, mean, I think the crease pattern weighs a little bit better, but from here I can just close sync this now. And we have our pleats in the right position. I think I could have actually just sunk fold from the first swivel I did and not had to do the second one. Transition units are cool, but annoying on plate armor. Yeah, they, they, they're definitely, it's all fidgety, right? It's, it doesn't, to get it clean, it's just like you have to do a little bit of uh, dexterous work to to get it to obey. Voice is lying, there's no, t oh wait, oops, um, amazing. Oh, Severio, you have a lot of transitions in that plate armor you're folding. It's very inspiring and wholesome. Are samurai possible without a crease pattern? Oh, what's up, Jeff? Um, I, ooh, uh, I don't think so. It'd be kind of hard to navigate where the creases go without the crease pattern, uh, unless I make a tutorial, but the tutorial, it's best done with the crease pattern. So no, I don't think it's possible to do without the crease pattern. Cause if I had to like count everything in the tutorial for the people, I think they would get bored. <laughs> so like crease pattern for pre crease is definitely the best way to go. Does any origamis have a teacher? There are some now, Simon. Um, I mean, anyone who's learned crease patterns from my class and plants class, that I get that serves as the teacher, right? Those are the resources that help them learn that ability. It's still kind of self-taught too, right? They took the, they made the decision to learn it themselves by watching those videos. But with the expansion of like the origami discords, online teaching, online conventions, YouTube channels that aren't just tutorial channels. There's a, there's been an explosion of like taught or potential teachers and really advanced students and people who learn on their own now um, over the past couple of years uh, because of that. So it, it's definitely like a shift. There's There's been a shift. So like starting origami now is a lot easier than starting origami back when we started because we didn't have any of those resources. Um, or not as many. We still had a lot more than like before, right? So every generation builds off the next, which is amazing. Um, 24 hour live stream. Um, not, not, oh, one day, one day. When we have a lot of viewers, maybe I'll do a 24 hour subathon or something. Um, we gather, yeah, we, we had the gather in our cells. It wasn't, there wasn't like structured classes and stuff. Okay, so this flap is like really open here. I'm gonna do something a little bit tricky. It's not super needed, but I did it on the other one, so and I kind of like it like that. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to spread out this flap across the board like this. And this is just makes it like a tad bit cleaner in terms of the paper layering that I, I want. I'll fold this down. It won't make too much change on the aesthetic look, but for me it's it's enough that this step is worth it to me. But yeah, after I watched that, the reason why I mentioned that like crime psychology thing 
is like the moment I they I heard the narrator like describe that phenomenon, I I felt like so called out. I was like, oh my goodness, that's exactly the motive that I had. <laughs> it's like he he just explained like myself to me. I was like, oh my goodness. So it was, it was kind of funny. Which you know, it's it's a thing that a lot of people have is when uh you you don't have something there's you have an inclination to want to give others that thing once you're able to. Um, so like for me now that I'm able to, um, you know, I have I've had like a job and stuff. I can host origami competitions. I can teach people. I can give away books uh, from Japan that people can't buy on their own. You know, I can chat with people. I can be that origami creator that has, no matter how many thousands of subscribers I'll have, I'll I'll still ch chat with people, and not be closed off. Um, you know, I'll I'll answer all the dumb questions if there's dumb questions. You know, people don't have to be worried about about that, <clears throat> or scared if they ever want to chat with me that I'll like not want to talk to them or something like that. So yeah. Very interesting like concept. Psychology. And I this flap got stuck. <laughs> there you go. Some origami features, in my opinion, are Joe Nakashima, Mariona's Zavala, Boyce, and Plant. Yeah, I don't... I mean, Joe is... I, I, I don't really want to talk about Mariano, but... Uh, me and Plant teach, like, concept. I don't really count tutorials as teaching origami. It, it's like, it is, but it's it's not the same. It's not what... It's not teaching what I do. It's, it's teaching renditions and teaching to replicate. They don't really teach shaping techniques or... You know, they, they show you the structure. It's like reading diagrams. You can learn to fold a model, but you can't really... It's not like learning to... I guess learning to fold origami, the definition of it, if you include creating origami, it's a little bit different. So with complex origami, it's, it's a little bit different nowadays than just folding. It's like maybe they'll teach you to fold things, but there's like a huge part missing in terms of teaching origami. Um... What paper is that? Tai Unryu. Very yes, thank you, Silverio. But pre creasing all that help. Um, maybe. Yeah, I probably would. Uh, I just don't because. Because I because I I didn't want to. <laughs> it definitely helps to pre crease it. Um, it's more annoying to pre crease it, but you don't have. To. Basically, this shows you don't have to. Um, there's there's pros and cons to both, right? Okay, but yeah. So now this flap is on its own. It's not. The whole like three layers flapping up and down. It's just a single, single layer flap like this. So for me, that small aesthetic change is worth. Uh, you can also pull this part out for an extra pleat, but I don't think it looks very good, unless you're trying to hide stuff here. But we don't need to go that far, I don't think. Okay, so that part is done. Now we're on to the legs finally. All right, so that we're we're at the three hour mark. And. Uh, yeah, we're finally at the legs. This part uh, goes fast though, except for the details. But this one has a little bit less. The ridge pleats on here, since I didn't pre-crease them, they'll take a little bit longer to do. But, um, oh, actually, so let me think. The other leg is here. So we'll, we'll, we'll leave the sheath for now. We'll just do the legs and then the, the waistcoat. That's the way it'll make sense in terms of doing an Elias stretch. Um, is it single or glued? It's just single. It's treated with methyl cellulose. So I, I, that might be what you mean by glued. Um, we'll be using glue later though to shape it because we are taking this on to New York and you really want your models. It, Here's a tip, guys. If you ever plan on traveling with your origami, make sure they're all glued. Because no matter how protected you think they are on storing, 
if it's not glued it's probably not enough um like even on this one it's been some time when i packed it away and it's bent right which you could fix it but it's like you you really don't want to have to fix it too much because paper is pretty fragile so make sure make sure you glue your models if you plan on traveling with them or keeping them around for like years i'm late hello what's up maximo not too late we still got quite a lot of stream left to uh, we got a lot of samurai left to collapse <laughs> Mm. I, I still disagree about folding from Mariano. I think it'll teach you bad habits, honestly. But, uh... Tadashi Mori has some... Yeah, Tadashi. Tadashi is great. I consider Tadashi a, a teacher, actually. Because he teaches concepts, too. Um, they're, some of them might be a little bit outdated, but he's back. So, there's more to learn. <laughs> Tadashi's great. By the way, boys, don't forget to hydrate. Thank you. Let's do a hydration check. I'll get some water right here. I'm out of coffee, but we got a little bit of coffee left. Yes, I'm just drinking espresso straight. That's my coffee. When I say coffee, I mean espresso straight. We, we, we drink coffee like that. You know what I mean? Thanks, Niz. I needed that water. Is there a specific website that... Oh. Yeah, Severio. Thank you, dude. I'm so glad I modded you. Excellent. That looks wonderful. Thank you, Maximo. Yeah, we're, we're getting there. We're making a lot of progress for sure. Rip coffee. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can get some more. I have an espresso, so... It's not like real es espresso. Real espresso is a little bit strong. But I do drink that straight too. I like if I go to, if I order coffee outside of my house, my preferred coffee order is like maybe like a real macchiato. So that's um, espresso with just a touch of foamed milk down the top. Um, or I think a Carducio would be equal part steamed milk, equal part. If there's any Italians in the chat, they can correct me on this, but it's it's mostly espresso. And if if I think like if I don't want any milk or dairy, I'd straight espresso. Just just espresso shot. I, I I like I like it. It's like I I need that strong hit of coffee flavor to like really wake me up, you know what I mean? Like it's part of like part of the taste itself, which it tastes good too. Good espresso tastes really good. But even like the bad espressos that are really bitter and like chalky and stuff, like it, it'll wake you up for sure. I, I know that's not a very popular opinion, but that's that's how I drink coffee. <laughs> um, world's greatest coffee. I think I was too new at the time, but I understood it better when I watched it again. Uh, I watched some of Tadashi's design vids. Yeah, yeah, same same here. I didn't. I think it wasn't enough. Because Tadashi didn't really teach too much crease pattern science, you know? So I feel like nowadays that's like a more essential part to learn before you start to design. Like basically plants class helps a lot. By the way, boys, have you, I've still not seen Moon Knight. I have been debating on buying a Disney Plus submission subscription. But because of like the origami convention and stuff, I, I decided I will save my money a little longer. And then I will buy Disney <laughs> Plus later to watch Moon Knight. I want to watch Loki. I want to watch uh, the Obi-Wan show and WandaVision. I've seen part of WandaVision just from ex other people's subscriptions, but I don't have my own. Yeah, I spent... Quite a bit to go to the or the origami convention, and then uh, the stickers cost a little bit of money. I have keychains; those cost a little bit of money, and the convention in general costs a lot. So, uh, at the time, I was trying to design without even knowing. Yeah, yeah, that's like really hard. I think even Simon, when back in the day when we were talking, when I was first starting to design stuff like you were there in the streams and whatnot like i had 
it helped because I had a little bit of knowledge of crease patterns, but it wasn't like I didn't know what flat folding was, you know. Um, actually, I have it right here, guys. Simon, you'll remember this. Like these were some of my first designs before the Samurai version one, which I have that here too. I, I did all this in Arizona. Here's the Samurai version one. But this, this came before the Samurai. I didn't know what flat folding was. I did I was just trying to pull spikes, generally have Elias stretches everywhere, and then trial and error for the head. The color change is all mushed. And then this one is painted, right? So it is a natural color change, but it's painted. Um, like nowadays, if I were to just design the same things, it'd be way less grid. Like this is the same grid as this. And this is a 64 grid. Like this definitely does not need a 64 grid. You know what I mean? Uh, like even my recent dragon, the carbon wing dragon. Or okay, here's here's the difference, right? So 64 grid, if we're talking 64 grids. 64 grid, 64 grid. Like this one makes a bit more sense that it's a 64 grid. I think it can still be done with less, but at least it's got two heads with a full set of teeth and like back spikes and leg pleats and talons on the wings, right? This doesn't have, like it's got, it doesn't need, it doesn't need it. You know what I mean? Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. You remember those. Yeah. Guys, Simon's been a subscriber for a really, really long time. Shout out, shout out to Simon. Simon was there being the only viewer in the live streams at times. He was there a lot. So huge, huge shout out to Simon. All right, let's put that. That's a, a big piece of history. I need to redo this model. I want to fold another Kaneki one day. I want to redesign it. I've been here since the first samurai. That's right, dude. That was that was a long time ago. <laughs> what kind of dragon is the two-headed dragon? It's a two-headed dragon. That's what I. Uh, that that's all I could describe it as. It's um okay. Let's let's think in terms of like dragon. I know there's uh, categories and defined by like I don't know if it's like D and D or something else that defines what a dragon is. But it's not a wyvern, so it's got four legs. I don't know if there's another classification if it has wing talons that are also arms because normally wyverns have these, right? So they have one pair of back legs and then claws on the wings. This is, I guess, a hybrid of six appendages and then two heads. So I'm not too sure what the best way to classify it is, but it's a, it's a two-headed dragon. I, I, whenever I design something, I try to like at least know a little bit of background or history or context. Um, that's part of my research I do. But I, I don't always remember <laughs> all of it. So, okay, so here's the legs. And then Silverio. So that structure you DM'd me about, it's going to be the same thing here that you're talking about where it swivels and then locks back in. Um, so that's what happens. This is the same concept, except it's a lot more layers. So in case you were still wondering about that, that's how, that's how this works. Um, but we need to fold this first before we do that. So, and so this part is for the sword sheath, which is in the corner since it is a long flap. Fun fact with Niz, leaf cutter ants have been doing agriculture for 50 million years. Wow, that's a long time. Dude, ants are impressive. It's like the history of ants and the, the, the giant ant wars that go on. <laughs> I wish I learned about box pleating earlier. Yeah, no, it's the same, same dude. I'm going to be at a hydrate. Uh, nice. Uh, Looks so lively. Thank you. 
I'm going to hydrate myself a little bit more, too, since I talked a lot. Oh, yeah, I, I saw a video about that, Nidra. Or not Nidra, uh, Niz. Like, the leaves are to feed the mushrooms, and the mushrooms is what the colony eats. Is that right? So it's like, it's not like the, the ants aren't really um, eating the leaves. They're, they're feeding their fungus. And then they eat the fungus. Which is like, that's pretty cool. Yeah, nature is pretty dope. All right, so here's the sheath. Now, originally, actually, Mark, if you're still here, originally I was going to have a transition unit from this angle here with the pleat that it's about to happen and downshift this entire sheath, basically uh, making this into 90, partial 96. And then I was like, you know, I can just fold it in half and it'll kind of look okay. <laughs> so I, I removed that from the crease pattern. I was like, that's completely unnecessary, boys. You don't need to do this. I'm, I'm glad I didn't do that. I think that would be extra pain for no reason. So here's that uh, swivel. What's nice about this flap is that it will block the, or it can at least block a lot of the, we don't want these layers underneath here to be shown. So it's like the distraction pleat. So that when we shape it out, you won't see it. And so you can actually see, like, um, basically with this, I will just, I will fold this in half. And this will kind of be like a belt. Or it can look like another pleat. Depending on how your eye views it. But our torso starts is only like this wide because this section is for the neck. So our torso has shrunk quite a bit. It's only two units tall. Here's our waistline. This is gonna spread out a little bit for our um, legs compared to here where our torso is like three units long. And then we have this extra waistcoat, but this is all like the torso unit. There's no definition of, of a waist here. So that's one of the other improvements I liked. And then the thing about this, even though we're folding through all the layers and kind of losing some paper, you can twist the hips very easily and use these as supports to hold the shaping position very freely like that. And I, for me, for me, I prefer this in shaping. Because if I tried to do the same thing here, because it's all locked together, you actually can't turn it very much. Or even um, even here on the Dragonite, where I have the head looking this way, the waist and hips are all pointed that way, and so it looks a lot more stiff. Um, the legs are turned up, but like this was basically like if you tried to do this in real life, you'd have to be really flexible. Also, the torso is way too tall. Um, compared to like a shorter torso so this is a nice improvement and you're gonna see that this was very effective in the other fold shaped so when I release the photos it makes a huge difference in posing 
a Maximo and Mark flexin their second language or their other language. I guess English is the second language. Um, or a different language. Maybe it's the third language. They're very nice. Glad you guys can chat. There's no need to go through that. <laughs> Not even for flexing. I know, right? Mark the 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 partial. Yeah, no, that that would be a pain, dude. It would add so much pain, honestly. Like, like no. <laughs> okay, so here's the layout here. So this this flap is going to be the waistcoat on this side. So it's like like this, and then this one is the waistcoat on this side. Normally this would have been, but this is going to be for the back because it is on top of our sheath, whereas this one slides underneath our sword sheath so that when we have our sheath, it's you can see the whole thing from the back. So this is like a layer order thing, which is kind of funky, but I think it'll work. And then the small change I did here makes it wider than on the other one. So this should work out a lot better. Um, it's like It's like a free... Free level shift right there, so that makes it wider. This is gonna split into two. So let's actually do this now. So now that we have these done, we can start to add some of the, the preparation shaping for the clasp. The clasp is definitely it's definitely not done yet. But here we would do something like this, where I'm gonna pull out two layers. And unfold it or unwrap it. So we're not stretching the layers like in this guy, in the Samurai version 3, we're unwrapping. And this is going to be the rest of our closed back. And our swivel actually happens from the other part of the arm here, where that was originally a valley fold but now it's going to become our transition unit i don't know if you can see it but it's up and underneath and these are going to be pleated just like here there's going to be six more pleats and that's going to be enough to close off the back entirely you can imagine and it's like perfectly in line here too. Uh, we and then it'll go underneath the sheath like that. And then this is also going to unwrap, which I think I should change the structure for this one. So I'm gonna undo this part of the crease pattern a little bit. And unwrap it. So you don't always have to level shift. We're technically level shifting, but not really. We're just unwrapping the outer layer on the edge. Like this. And then this is going to become the waistcoat on this side and then maybe I was right with the crease pattern you just have to get the unwrap first All right, so we don't need as many pleats on this one Something like that. I think this might still be incorrect. I'm gonna have to check it. But you can see the content. Like once we pleat this, I think we have one more set of pleats right here. And so this will shift from here to here. Something like that. Uh, 
But, uh, I'm gonna leave it like that for now in case it's not. So that's the concept there. Then, we have ridge pleats to do for the legs. And then we have the shoulders. So let's let's do the shoulders first, because I kind of want to show how I do that. Let's do the thin arm for now. Get this out of the way. So here we're, we're doing the unwrap. But because there's two sides of the pleat, we have... We're not just doing the unwrap. This one we actually have a transition similar to what we did here. Actually, this one is the, we can kind of, we don't have to fully, up, actually, yeah, no, this one we stretch the layer and then do the transition. We don't, we don't unwrap it. So it's similar to what we did up here as well as what we did for the chest, but we make this little like water bomb looking thing. And that's our, that's our transition unit. Because when we have that, we can do a swivel in the layers because it's a full pleat to get it to stand up like that on its own. And this, it's the same swivel down here. So we're reusing a lot of structures just in different use cases. Like this right here, same kind of deal. And we do that all the way down the shoulder. And what happens is we get a bunch of these two by one unit flaps that are free that also we can distribute across the shoulder so that's not all thick bunched up to here. And then we have a fancy pattern that we're going to fold in since we have all these pleats. And I'm, I gotta try to make these clean actually, because especially the one that's gonna have the pattern in it. Because the cleaner it is, the, the better the pattern turns out. But we just keep going. So on the Samurai version three, on this shoulder pad, we just stretched like a quarter of it and then we folded through the entire flap to get the scale kind of look it's like fake scales here we're actually defining the entire so this the same shoulder pad can be done on the version 3 uh, it'll look a little different because the version 3 has a longer shoulder pad i think it's a three three units long instead of two And then, but we should end up with like, is it like five flaps? Something like that, six. So it's pretty satisfying. You have to do this, it's kind of repetitive, but um, I don't know. It's it's kind of a fun, like it's, it's nothing difficult or anything. Boys, if you can send me a pic of the finished collapse on Discord and the time it took, I'd really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I might be able to send a picture of the base. I don't, I'm not going to send any shaping picture or whatever, but I'll, I'll at least let you know how long it took. I don't know if I'll send a picture. We'll see. We speak Peruvian. Oh, that's so cool. Couldn't find origami paper because of Mark. <laughs> Yeah, it's really cool if I was confused when I first saw it. Uh, sorry, guys. It's almost at three hours. And, oh, let's go. So I think we're on track. I think I said it would take five hours. We're getting close. It might be a little bit under five hours. I'm going to go. Thanks, Niz, for stopping by. This transmission is treasure. Thank you. Boys, uh, okay. Right there. What kind of paper are you using and where do you get it from? Thank you, Mark. Yes, it's Ty Unruh. Thank you, Mark and Silverio. How did I come up with that? 
uh, this. I came up with this. I'm trying to think. When did I first see uh, it? That, not it's nothing original. I don't think. Um, so Mark Mark showed me this transition, and then when I was doing the this one, the dragon plate armor. It's a similar transition for these pleats from the Rathalos by Joker. So I would say the first time I really understood it would be that Rathalos. So that's on my Instagram, that fold. So Rathalos by Joker. I discovered this pleat pattern. And then with the pleat armor, I level shifted down and then did the pleat armor and had like this double pleat thing here. And I also used it for the legs and arms. And it kind of evolved from that use into being like, oh, I can do this anywhere. Any single layer set of pleats, I can I can change it like that. Um, so it's, it's a new addition to the boys arsenal that I'm going to start spamming in a lot of my designs. Hey, what's up, Dongo? This is recorded, yes. And on YouTube. Thanks. Thanks for joining in, man. I was telling um, my chat how you have this genius feature on your Twitch channel that will bonk you when you go out of, out of screen or out of frame. So like if you fold out of frame, the chat can bonk you and then you'll be like, oh, I'm out of frame and bring it back in. I was telling them it's, it's such a good idea and I, <laughs> I should come up with something similar. Uh, but yeah, guys, Dongo, he streams on Twitch. Origami Folder and Monster Hunter Gamer and other games. Really fun time on his stream. Go check it out. Um, let me see if I can... I, so I don't have any bots linked right now. Don't go, so I've, I gotta do this the old-fashioned way and copy and paste. But, uh... Hold up. Actually, Dongo, I'm gonna mod you. And then feel free to drop your... Okay, uh, feel free to drop your Twitch down below. And yeah, you might catch me on Monster Hunter Days gaming with Dongo. Because I also play Monster Hunters. Um, that's a lot of, like, that two-headed dragon is kind of Monster Hunter inspired. That I showed earlier. But yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun over there. Uh, Mark, I like the shoulder detail a lot, so I copied it on the legs and thought about putting it on the chest too. Yeah, Mark, on, so Mark's version of this samurai, he, uh, he did some special legs. I don't want to spoil too much, but he added this pattern. So uh, we haven't done the pattern yet. Once we show the pattern, you guys will understand. But he, he applied the pattern to the legs as well. And a full thing on the waist. I do a half one on the waist. Mark figured out how to do it full on the waist. It's 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 pretty fun. It's a cool pattern. Okay, we have one more set of these pleats to go, I think. But yeah, you can see how we distributed a lot of these layers that would normally stay hidden into the top so it gets thinner. Yeah, yeah, Dongo folded the waifu, that's right. I'm out to work. Well, no problem, man. Yo, have a good time at work. Hope it's not too lengthy of a work day. But thanks for stopping by, man. Means a lot. A... There you go, Silverio. Nice. Yes, I think that's right. Awesome. Thanks, man. I hope to play Monster Hunters with you again soon. That stream was fun, uh, even though the internet kind of died. Okay, we got a couple more of these. I think technically we don't have to go all the way down, but uh, AKA I'm, I'm starting to get, 
Sorry to get lazy on myself. No, okay, we'll, we'll finish this off. I think I think we do need all of them to get the correct pleat to show underneath. I can't remember. Maybe I should look on my crease pattern if I went all the way down. But at least it'll distribute the layers a little bit more evenly if I do it like this. I'll be listening at work. Oh, sweet. Great. Yeah, I'll definitely be here for quite a bit longer. These uh, shoulder pads themselves take quite a little while. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So this is plenty, actually. Technically, we only need this, and then the pattern would go here. But we'll do we'll do at least one more for safe measure because then it'll distribute the layers a little bit more evenly. And we will like that a lot. Alright, so we're almost there. The wire weaving in the fold to shape is so cool. Thank you. Yeah, this is this one's a this one's the newest um, version of the samurai. So the old one is here. But yeah, but you can see like as it's opened up, we have all this, all the all the pattern like weaving through. Um, to kind of shows how we created it. That's a nice way to describe it. It's all those layers. That is one of the cool things about the process of these box plated models is like when they're starting to open up, it it does look pretty cool. Like you can really see the the structure kind of happen, and then it folds back up a little bit. Okay, so I think that's all the I think that's all the pleats we need. So we we won't go. I I probably should. So we have potentially one more that we could do, but I'm gonna leave it there. This is gonna be our base pleat here, and then our pattern will happen on the one that's right here. And the one that has the pattern, I'm gonna try to pull it cleanly so that we can get the full effect of the pattern. I think Mark's seen this, or Mark's definitely seen it. He's folded it, but if I did an art archive stream of this, if anyone else saw it before, I think uh, I was still kind of just experimenting and changing it. What do you think about making human figures with 22 and a half instead of box plate? I don't think I've seen one before. Uh, there's quite a few, Simon. Oh, you mean from me? So this one's 22.5. Uh, and if Dongo is here, this is a Monster Hunter one. Great Swordsman. Uh, I, it kind of depends what you're looking for. I think 22.5 with oversized weapons doesn't make sense. So it, it kind of depends what you want. If you're doing like a waifu, 22.5 makes sense. Um, if you're doing a waifu holding a spear, it makes less sense because... If you like box plate, the advantage of box plate is it's really good for, um, like uh, originally it was really good for insects because they have long, thin appendages. Versus box plate is more round, or twenty two point five was for like rounded mammals and more volume. So like with something like this where we have long stick structures with arms and legs and a bunch of details that are long and stick like, box plate makes a little bit more sense. For something like this that has more volume and even though it has a big sword, it's you know it's connected to the back. So there's less appendages or less things that have to be stick-like. It kind of works for it. I mean, this could still be done in box plate the same, but I was teaching this one, so made sense in 
you have your teaching something or diagramming 22.5 um, the obelisk models from his book they're all 22.5 Uh, one exception would be like Rapunzel, which is very similar to the waifu actually, but that's just because I could use the, the whole layer for her hair, but it's like one long appendage instead of like multiple, but like these ones have multiple. Okay. Let's try to get this pattern so you guys can, we've been talking about this pattern for a while now. First thing to do is to fold the corners to the center as much as possible. And when I have some overlap like this, we want to try not to. So we're going to arrange the, the flaps to avoid it as much as we can. And then once we had the pattern in place, it kind of holds itself into place. Um, but if we have like that little overlap thing, we can fix it later. We just want to have as little of it as we can. While this paper is still thin, it, we're being affected by just the paper thickness in general because of how many layers there are. So, you know, it's it's bound to happen. Can't, can't avoid it entirely. I guess the way to avoid it would be to like pre-glue all the layers before you fold this part. But I think that'd be gluing too early and then you would lose out on shaping. Pretty sure you need only five, two for the tessellation, two for the size, and one to flex the back. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right, Mark. Um, great sword, yeah. Yeah, he's looking buff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it, it kind of depends. Um, I'm more of a fan of doing box plate right now because... Yeah, there's, there's more issues with 22.5. I'm more experienced with box pleating. So for me, I don't have too much reason to step far into 22.5 since I want to do a lot of things with like weapons. Okay, so here we're folding the flap into the center for preparation, but you can already see that these corners are billowing out a little bit. And that's where the pattern happens. It's a it's a twisted square. Which, yeah, I'm pretty sure I showed this on the uh, other stream. Do I pre-crease these more? I forget if I pre-crease them more in the other one, but you don't have to. Might be a little cleaner if I did. Maybe I did last time I, that's basically a squash fold that twists like a tessellation. This comes from tessellations. We've just integrated it into our shoulder design. Let me use my tweezers since this paper is getting stuck. I think I did pre-crease it before. I'm going to go ahead and pre-crease the other ones um, after I do this one, because I think it'll turn out a little bit nicer. I've already committed to this one, so <laughs> we don't need to pre-crease it. I just have to free fold in the square a little bit more carefully to get it to obey. There's one. I guess we can't really pre-crease this one either because it's already starting to go. But on the other side, we will pre-crease. Square twist tessellation.
And here we're running into one of the issues with this paper where it has uneven fibers. So it's making this back half of the square a little bit annoying to fold. You just have to be careful so it doesn't mush on itself. This one turned out a little bit more rectangle and square. Actually, is this square too big? Yeah, this is why you want to pre-crease. <laughs> Save a little bit more guideline, but I think I think we can get it. Okay, crinkled a little bit more than we want, and we have a little bit of overlap, but that's kind of okay. So later on, when we fold it out, it's going to spread these layers a little bit to round them out. And you can't really notice too much, even if I zoom up. Might not be able to see it, but let's let's uh let's pre-crease these. <laughs> Play it safe. And get them as nice as we can. So and also is to hopefully spend less time having to collapse these. That definitely seemed to work a little bit better, or at least faster. Yeah, someone was asking earlier if this can be done, like what size I recommend. So like stuff like this is definitely why I'd advise larger paper because it does get kind of small. It's definitely easier to do cleanly with larger paper. Because even with this paper, it's a little bit messy. I think it'll, it'll be okay. The uh, gist is there. We just have to clean up all these corners later on. So that they're not overlapping each other. And then our squares aren't fully squares, but that's okay. So then these two layers, these are the ones that are gonna wrap. So they hide all this stuff around. And then on the top here, we have this one to keep the shape as well as it's going to hold position. So we're gonna be shaping this down and then it'll still have this whole flap here. So that's the goal of these flaps in the pattern. It actually looks decent, and from afar you can't notice how messy it is. But we have to do that on the other side as well. But since that's kind of tedious, let's do something a little bit different and do it on this one right here. Or is it this one that I do it on? No, I think it's here. Yeah, it's right here. So. I think. Is it right here that I do it? Let me check my crease pattern really quick before I commit. Just kidding. It was the other one. So it is this flap that I do it on. Good thing I checked. This is where the transition unit happens. Okay, cool. So, and this one, since there's, it's so close to the edge, we should be able to get this one way cleaner. So we don't have to worry about all that thickness messing us up. Hello, thanks for joining us, Danush. 
Boy, uh, Severio asks, you ever thought about making the shoulders more like a triangle or 22.5? Um, actually, Silverio, I was thinking of doing the squares as kind of like the knee pads that the plate armor has. So raising them and adding those details there. But yeah, you're right. I could do a different shape than a square. The square works because of how the orientation is, but I'm sure I could figure out a way to use the other layers to pivot it into a different shape. But there's still room that you could kind of uh, adjust these into whatever shape you want because they're open like this. So, you know, you, you can do, you can, you still have some freedom to, to play around with it. If I wanted to keep the same structure, but change the shape a little bit. I think it'll be a little easier to see on this one. So these do get pretty tiny. These are partial 96, I believe. Not as small as our mouth was, but still formidable of a challenge to get clean. Okay, and then from here, our transition unit this time is happening underneath this flap. Like that, you can already see this opening up a little bit for our pattern. We don't wanna fold that yet, so we want the other one too. Just like that. Okay, now we can do these one at a time for the square twist. And we might not need to use our tweezers as much here just because it is a lot easier to get the paper to work for us. There you go, look at that. So that is definitely a lot cleaner than before <laughs> on the shoulder. And then same thing now on this side. And actually I think these, so right now it's transitioned to the corner. You can just do it as a 45 degree angle, but I think the way I shaped the other one, I actually used these used it to the corner. So I'm, I'm going to move them to the corner because something's reminding me that I did it like that before. And then let's see if we can do this squash without tweezers again. And let's use our tweezers because it's over squashing itself. There you go. So yeah, these ones are really easy to do. A lot cleaner. These ones are a little bit harder to get clean. But there you go, still kind of nice. And I think, yeah, what I did with these is I think I just valley folded up to allow that pattern from our transition unit to show to the corner. There you go. So it's it's just it's a very small texture thing. But it kind of works. Right underneath our belt. And then down here. I think I did something like this.
just to widen it a little bit. Like that. All right, and then now on here, let's get our legs going. So let's do those ridge pleats. Um, and we're gonna do this sequentially. So this will be a little bit more interesting. Now, actually I realized on the crease pattern, I didn't do all the ridge pleats that I had meant to do, or like later in the shaping, I added more. But the base two are there for the knee. So let's at least get those. And we can start that by just spread squashing all along this flap. And then we're gonna turn these one unit squashes into those ridge pleats. So it's basically you, if you did the Samurai version three tutorial DLC, this is what we do. You squash fold along the ridge and then you pull out the corner, lay it flat, do the same thing all the way up. And if it gets stuck, like that one did, you just go underneath the paper to push it a little bit into place. But generally, these are pretty easy squash folds to do compared to the, some, some of the other ones that we've done in this fold. like that and we don't need to do the very top one I don't think but we can if we want to <clears throat> or at least yeah we, we all we have to do is pull the corner out here but we don't have to squash fold the last two now if you wanted to shape it a little bit differently you probably could here we don't have to Leg sequence is so satisfying to fold. I know, right? Yeah, it's pretty nice. Then from here, we're gonna shift this pleat up to here. And so you can kind of, um, you don't really even have to free fold it. It's just you, you pull this one flat and it, you create new creases that connect the corners like that. And then the same thing on this side. And then when you do that and you recollapse it, you're gonna naturally create or extend the 22.5 degree line in between here. And that's what gives you this ridge pleat, which is actually big enough now to actually count as a pleat. Like that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to stretch not this one all the way, but we're just doing basically the same thing starting from here. I think, I think this is what we do. Let me, let me double check the crease pattern. This might not, or I can't remember if we skip one or. Yeah, 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 this is what we do. And actually before I do that, it, it makes it a little bit cleaner if I do something like this. So I just valley fold this down like that. And then that creases the other side when I pull it this way. 
And this is definitely more of a shaping sequence. Uh, it also makes the axis available for us to use the two with legs, two unit wide legs. But the order of what these ridge pleats are in is kind of up to whatever pattern you want to put into the leg. So if you are full in this, you don't have to do it exactly like the way I do it. And the paper's getting stuck a little bit here. It's been a little bit annoying. That's okay. As long as it's out of the way enough. All right, and then we have our pleat up here. Now, one thing that's kind of fun with doing something like this I think this is where I stopped the decrease pattern. I think technically you can go up higher, but one thing that's fun you can do here is you can actually now f do some valley folds along here. So you're basically unfolding this 22.5 degree line and swiveling it inwards and you get this shape. like that and then like a triangle here and I noticed it out of focus let me try to see if I can change the focus again right so this is it naturally folds in like that and then from here, you have a pleat down here. All right, we, we have a lot we can do now. So this is kind of like shin armor. Over here is where we're gonna construct our knee joint. And then up above here is where we can do our, um, any anything else we really wanna do. So like if I wanted, I could do another stretch up, which I can't remember if that's what I did on the let me let me look at the pictures of my fold really quick see how i shaped it um nope that was it i actually didn't even do this stretch so this is this should be fine here and then um So this part is not structured on my crease pattern, but on Mark's <laughs> it is. But basically there's enough space where you can do a little move kind of like that to have it as a two units wide flap. And then it'll be the same on this leg. And I'm almost out of water again. So let's quickly just do this. And since this leg is way thicker, we actually do the same pattern on this side, but on this side, we still stretch it because we actually get a natural change here with um, the pleat that's going on in the back. So like that's actually a, a natural change. It would technically just self intersect here if we did that on the other side. Um, I guess we need to squash fold this to actually get to work, but we don't really care about the pattern on the back side of the leg. The back side of the leg will only, mostly just be used to distribute the layers evenly to the other side, as well as to kind of become 3D. We can kind of do a 3D shaping with our leg like this. We can't really do that on the other side. We can at least do it like this on this side. Like these ones I can, it's actually working a lot more quickly to do these squash folds. But uh, we don't really need to worry too much about how they look. So 
and I'll need to pull those corners out. The one we do need is on this side. This. And now we have the back side as reference a little bit. I don't know if that's what you did, but that's what I did on the leg shaping. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's nice, Mark. We our our minds thought alike. We uh we we did it the same, I think. And I'm out of focus. Let me reset. I totally forgot to reset the focus. There we go. But yeah, this is a really satisfying sequence to do. Um, I don't know. It's it's always fun. It's it's a cool pattern to look at, and it's fun to fold. Like I love squash folds, and this is a whole bunch of squash folds. So it's a, it's a lot of fun. And I don't think we need to do this one. I guess we did here. We have one more. But we technically don't need to. Because I didn't on the original fold. But we do need to pull the corners out, which I forgot to do earlier. Might have been a little bit easier to do before it was squash folded. But that's okay. Just keep it clean. Two more. Just like that. Hey, Simon's back. What's up, dude? We've made some progress, I think, since you were last here. same kind of thing we did on the other leg to get it to be kind of flat foldy on that side I actually did it wrong here this is supposed to be a mountain but uh, ultimately it won't really be flat because we're gonna make the thighs as rounded as we can. All right, so. So Vario, do you think a samurai would look good with a cape? And Mark says, you can bet that he does. Yeah, for sure, dude. A samurai with a cape, that sounds lit. That sounds pretty cool in my opinion. I, I agree with Mark's opinion there too. Okay, now we do these stretches. So I see uh, you can really just pull and fold. I kind of was a little too careful on the other side, but in an actual sequence, you can just pull it like that. And fold this forward. And then pull the next one. But not all the way. Because I'm just going to there. I guess I could have just pulled it actually. I think it maintains that pleat. And 
now we have the same structure on the other side and we just do that little reverse foldy swivel thing like that and then valley fold this back up and that is the structure for the legs and yeah you can probably do a lot more like you could probably actually instead of having the ridge plates here you can kind of do it like this one where i used the ridge plates to actually get like a knee cap kind of thing going on here but on this one, I, I like this kind of pattern, especially then I fold in a knee pad. I don't know. You can do a lot of different things. Kind of like Doctor Strange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could definitely do like a Doctor Strange kind of vibe. Um, even if the cape isn't as like... Like, I think Doctor Strange's cape has like the collar. Like Even if it's not like a collared cape, if you have like a shoulder side cape. Um, you know, if you can look at Samurai fan art or art in general that have like like i think one half is cloaked you know he's got a side shoulder cap and then he's holding a sword bunch of different things you can do with a cape or cape or cloak there's both ways i'm starting shaping i'm not really shaping i'm just folding all these structural um stuff so i don't really count this as shaping oh i think this is like this But um, yeah, this isn't really shaping. So the last structural things to do that we'll do in the stream. Um, I guess we could do the fingers. We'll do the simple fingers. So we won't do the sink folds for the fingers, but we'll do the fingers and then the opposite shoulder pad and I think that will complete our speed run. That'll be at least everything on the crease pattern that's shown. And Mark, I took your advice. I mentioned this earlier, but I did the fingers. I flipped the Elias stretch to move the war paper to the handle. And yeah, I, I can't believe that was such a small brain thing of me <laughs> to have basically six finger flaps. This makes so much more sense to have the Elias stretch pointing this way it works so thank thank you for finding that and telling me so yeah for the fingers i don't pre-crease the fingers from the before class i just as you saw i folded through all the layers with the squash fold and then that's enough pre-creasing to get these one unit flaps um here for the fingers I should probably order my dinner. Oh no, I have I have food to cook. Okay, good. I was like, wait, do I have food? I do have food. For after the stream. Okay, now here we can just... Mark, don't worry, man. It happens when you design something this intricate. Yeah, it's it's extra help. I think um, if anyone was to look at like a design process, seeing the transition, like basically I had the base and then you like modified and fixed a lot of it, would be like a good telltale sign of like collaborative design and how it works really well. So here, this part is for a thumb, and yeah, this is way thinner of a thumb than the original way I did it as well as much thinner than the original Samurai version three in general. We still have our transition. 
nice and nice. We'll just hide our thumb inside the flap for now because it can flat fold without. So this is even less cursed than the first Samurai version 4 that I did, which the original Samurai version 4 fold was less cursed than these ones. Honestly, I shaped these pretty decently for how cursed the structure is on it. Um, it's it's pretty bad. <laughs> it's a lot of mushing, but this one is a lot less mushing, so that's good. Okay. So now last thing to do is um, shoulder pad. And then that will be it for the stream. Although it took us quite a while last time. So let's see if we can... Uh, do this a little bit faster, although I still want it clean, is the thing. I don't want it sloppy. So we'll be here for maybe another 20 minutes. But I think I will take a quick break before we finish up the shoulder pad to get water, because um, I need to refill my water cup. So. I say that taking a break as I'm folding. Uh, let me, <laughs> I'm gonna finish this first one and then we'll come back. At least that way I can remember what I was doing. Won't like forget. Okay. And I will be right back guys.
All right, I am back. So I want to check on the... So I, I bought this like Korean barbecue style meat. It comes frozen. But uh, I was defrosting it yesterday. It's still a little bit frozen. So I, I might have to find myself some other food. I was going to cook that tonight. But hey, what's up, guys? What's up, Shang? Shang Nara, another YouTube member. Hello, hello. Or actually, uh, sorry, I was drinking water. We're almost done. Streams four and a half hours so far, so I think we're on target to hit our five hour mark. And we are just, basically we just have this shoulder pad to do, and then we're all done for the day. So Sorry you came in late, Shang, but thanks for joining in. I appreciate it a lot. This has been quite the speed run. I, I'm definitely feeling a little bit tired <laughs> and a little bit hungry as well. But we're chilling. And then now I'm just having to think about what I should eat for dinner. So if I order something out, I could do like a like a fish sandwich. There's a lot of sandwich places that are still open. I could do um I'm trying to think, what what am I in the mood for? Not sure. I do have spicy instant ramen though. If I if I if if, if it comes to that, I can get something. And you just eat it with the ramen. Could do sushi. I have some leftover. So there's a grocery store that sells like sashimi ready fish so it's like way cheaper than ordering it from a restaurant um i could just walk down the street and get like italian food not too sure i'll have to see when they're closed maybe i'll do that that might be fun either a pizza or a pasta or something like that Also, it's really nice in Arizona, like at nighttime, because it cools down to like an acceptable temperature, <laughs> and it's uh, nice to sit outside like that. So I can sit at the outdoor seating. Yeah, we'll, we'll do something like that for dinner tonight, and then I'll cook my Korean barbecue meat tomorrow. You're late enough to see the fire. That's true. Yeah, this is, um, Four and a half hours in is kind of what you get. Yeah, at least by doing this, I, I kind of have a better idea. When people ask me, how long does it take to fold? I'm going to be like, well, collapsing will take about four and a half hours. Um, uh, Pre-creasing and collapsing will take about 45, four and a half hours. Grid, maybe like 45 minutes to an hour. So that's like five and a half hours of time. Probably, probably faster than that. It's like, let's say five hours. Five hours for it to pre-crease grid and collapse and then probably spend another five hours shaping so 
or more i i can't remember how long i spent shaping that other samurai but i did it like periodically through the week so if i did like an hour a day it would be like five hours or a week or uh weekdays but i think i spent more than that so I, i'm not sure it's either i can't remember uh, but rough estimate would be five hours of shaping sounds about right it could be more though it'd be like six or seven so honestly well that was the first one too so i was kind of still figuring out the shaping so if i do another one it probably would be faster but at least the first one it took me a while to like decide on everything So very, I'm just playing around with the paper, but I think I found a way to get triangle things for his shoulders. Ooh, feel free to share that in the uh, members discord. So very, uh, sounds pretty sweet. I can, I can foresee maybe, uh, I can, I, I'm at least going to fold Mark's version of this uh, down the line and then I if these sell better than the other ones, then of course I'll be folding these again. But that'd be cool to have the option to do a triangle instead of a square. I'll see how easily it fits into the um, shoulders if you uh, have a crease pattern for it too. Or at least like a however you want to share the structure. Triple the time, triple the result, A. Yeah, it doesn't really work like that, but that that quote worked for the, the TikTok though. It's kinda of, it's kinda of catchy, right? It's definitely not really true, but <laughs> uh, it's like the, the, the concept is is fair. Okay, this one, even though there's like technically more thicker on this side, it like turned out way nicer than the other side. I think because um, the other side, I was rushing it a little bit to like show off the pattern. I think I got too excited, so ended up being less clean. This one, I'm a little bit slower, more meticulous on the uh, folding. As a result bit cleaner all right so I think this is all the plates we need so we have one for this one and then we have this is going to be our pattern on these two and we have these three and then we have two more in the back here for yeah so that's all we need and then our pattern goes on this set let's fold in our pre-creases I gotta film some uh, TikToks tonight. There is one that I have an idea of to do with the Samurai version three and then the Samurai version four. Although that TikTok won't be posted for a little while, but at least while I'm at the convention, I can post it. Now, in the meantime, I think uh, whoever is watching still I have a question for you guys. If you guys were to ask one question from someone like Robert Lang or Jason Koo or Beth Johnson or any kind of like more notable origami artist, what would you want to to ask? Or like what 
basically, what would you like me to ask that I can interview them at the Origami USA convention and make like a so there's this guy named um Proko. He go and he has this video where he goes to like a drawing convention or like uh, people who are really good at like academic drawing or artists any kind of thing they're there and he he asks them some questions so he has like a video it's like what's what's your biggest tip for a beginner and like he asks every single person that question and oftentimes they have different pieces of advice he also asks them um you know some more drawing related questions but those are in like other videos so for like a vlog or even like a short video, I'm trying to like, I like that format because for one, I don't have to bother them that much. Like even though I'm friends with some of these people and they'd be down to do like a, you know, half an hour's worth of interview, that's a lot of time. I don't want to take that away from them. It'd be better if I can just go up to them, you know, uh, hey, Robert, can I get, ask you a quick question and it'll be for this video I'm working on and I'm like, sure. I'm like, all right, Dr. Lang, you know, what's your greatest tip for beginners? And they'll respond, boom, that's it. Like that kind of thing would be a lot easier to make a video out of. Uh, <laughs> Mark, hey, Mr. Dr. Robert J. Lang, can we take a picture, please? Ah, yes, yes, yes. Well, of, of course, besides that, but besides asking for a picture, what, what else would you like to, like some kind of knowledge piece, I guess, that you would, you would want to, to learn from these origami folders? Yeah, my very first convention, I uh, got a picture with Dr. Lang. And the second convention I went to, I I didn't make it into a... Actually, I don't think I talked to him at all. The third convention, I um, it was raining, and we, ca we hung out, like, in this... In, like, one of the waiting rooms, because we were both there early. So I got to chat with him a little bit there. We kind of like caught up a little bit. I'm like, oh, hey, Robert. And then he, that was a time when he had a bruise on his eye because he like fell um, and hit his face on like stairs or something like that. But we were talking. He was like, oh, yeah, you know, I tripped and got a bruise on my face right before the convention. And then after that convention was Peacock, where I saw him again, said hi, introduced my nephew to him, who was a fan, got it signed. And then after that, I got hired to Origami USA for social media. And then I had to email Dr. Lang a ton of stuff. And we just like work together now. It's pretty, pretty lit. So the times have changed. But yeah, now I can kind of talk to them comfortably from being a fan to like an acquaintance, I guess. I wouldn't really say I'm like friends with Dr. Lang, but acquaintance would definitely be good i think to become his friend i would have to hang out with him a lot more how to be better at designing oh, okay that's a good question what's the jader name that's so funny what's some of your favorite structures oh okay that's a great question too that kind of ties into lunatic origami's question too um so i could ask you know what's your favorite structure to design with or something like that or um yeah okay I'll, I'll have to i'll come up i'll have to that i, I kind of like that, that I'll, I'll try to think of a way to phrase it where it's easy for them to understand so like i think um in general like structure might be a little too vague like what do you mean by structure but if i can relate it more to design and be like oh yeah you know like i really like spirals or something um uh, or yeah i'll i'll, I'll figure it out Maybe for Lang, he's like, oh, I really like complicated clothes sinks. Uh, or doing things based off of 30 degrees instead of 22.5 degrees. That's a great question. Uh... <laughs> I don't think I'm on a chill enough level, Simon, to uh, ask Robert that question, but that's pretty funny. Why are his crease patterns all so whack? I 
Mark, how do you decide what paper to use? How much time should I spend on a new design, bush shaping design? What are your favorite designs? What are you, uh, and if you want your favorite from, oh, and for, favorite designs from other full, ooh, that's a good question too, Mark. Asking designers what their favorite, oh, that's cool. That's a really good question too. I feel like we don't get to hear that all too often. It's like, who are the people or what are the folds that they really like to look at or inspired by? And the time question is a cool one too. I don't think I've heard that one be asked. How much time do you spend on your own designs? Okay, so I think we have like two or three good questions to ask people now. I'll work through those and come up with like a little script for myself. And then that'll go into the convention vlog or some, some kind of, maybe not a full vlog, but it'll, it'll be something. How to start a design like the base. I think that question can be answered by like, they'll probably just be like, oh, Robert will be like, oh, I have my book. It's like, okay. So I think I'll try to avoid that question if anything, I will ask like, oh, what's your greatest advice to a beginner designer or someone, something like that. Uh, but even that question is still a little vague because I think I already know the answer, which it's either, you know, um, like just do it <laughs> is, is oftentimes the, the, the answer. Like if you want to design, just start designing. And, and design as much as you can. That's that's a common answer I've heard from a lot of people and uh, answer that I agree with. If you want to try designing, just just do it. Don't worry about, too, don't get too bogged down. Like you'll learn the formal stuff later. You know, you can watch plants and to class, but you, you just got to start. Um, you don't have to understand everything perfectly before you start because if you start and you're missing fundamentals you'll learn what those fundamentals you're missing are and then you can work on them so um, I think that's that's their answer but something along those lines I can ask a little bit I can probably yeah things that will help with like getting into design For Yeehaw, we know it's a month and two and a half years. That's, yeah, there you go. Oh, wow, okay, this shoulder pad came out way cleaner than this one. I almost want to redo this shoulder pad. Uh, I think the pre-creasing definitely helped out, but that's okay. We're going to, maybe we'll choose a pose where the inaccuracies of this one won't be noticed as much as the other side, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad on this side. This side came out way better. Maybe it's because I was warmed up with these that it came out better on this side. That could very well be it. All right, that is the Samurai version for collapse, guys. So we fold it flat and kind of see what we have going on here. I have the legs, we got the waist, we got the shoulder pads, we got the sword. We have, we didn't do the fingers, I guess. Tech, uh, that's fine, we don't need to do them here. You guys know how that works. We got the waistbands on both sides. One here, one here. We have our sword sheath right here. We have our closed back, which I didn't do the, the transition units for. Ah, oh, man, do I do the transition units now, or do I do them later? Hmm. Well, we have, <laughs> we have, I guess there's a little bit more to do. Uh, 
any percent, right? Okay, every anything except for the transition units and then the fingers on this side. But it's pretty complete. I think I need to go eat something. Um, this is a question I got for the Peruvian origami magazine. Can you say some words for new folders or something like that? I said, don't get discouraged. If you fail with a small paper, try again with a larger sheet. I like that, Mark. I really like that. I think that is, that's one of the questions I'll ask. I, I like that. That's really good. So yeah, maybe when I go up to people, I'll be like, I have three questions for you guys. I'll ask, um, what's your, uh, can you say some words for new folders? Um, you know, either some type of thing about what's your favorite origami structure or design structure to use. And then three is like, um, you know, what's your favorite design of your designs or of someone else's design? And, and that should be fast enough for them to fire off answers to me. I'll get the recording and then be good to go. And the only thing will be me not being too awkward, asking them to like step away a little bit and then <laughs> get the recording. The other thing, so camera recording audio, I don't have a nice microphone for that. I could use the microphone I'm using for streaming and just like hold my laptop. That might be better actually. I'll have my laptop set up for recording audio and I'll just bring them over to whatever table I'm at. Be like, yo, you mind stopping by my laptop for a quick interview? Uh, I'll be like, sure. You can change the questions depending on the person. If it's Brandon or Chris, you can chill out. That's true. Yeah, definitely with Brandon and Chris, like I'll be way more chill. Beth Johnson, I'm pretty chill with. That'll be uh, fine. Like Winston Lee, we're homies. Um, people like Lang and some of the people I don't know as well, like LaFosse and uh, Quentin Trollip. I'll be, uh, I haven't talked to them as much, so <laughs> it'll be a little bit more nerve wracking. I think more like Quentin and LaFosse. Like I, I really don't, I haven't talked to them very much, but Lang should be fine. I think he'll be okay with it. Um, Yeah. Scary, guys. Scary. <laughs> but I'll, I do it for the content. You know what I mean? No, it's all good. I, I, could, I can handle it. <clears throat> but uh, you guys can pray that I don't get too scared. <laughs> uh, and hopefully it won't be too awkward or cringe. But... Yeah, that's the idea. This wraps up the stream, I think. So we have our Samurai version 4. We have our Samurai version 3. And... It'll probably be around the same size as that version 3 when it's all done being shaped. My tools away. Yeah, that was a really fun stream. I think uh, that was a long stream. But thank you all for watching. I'm going to wrap it up here because I got to eat. Um, but yeah, what a great stream. Thank you guys so much for chatting with me the whole time. Um, thank you guys if you stayed any duration of time if you're here from the beginning or if you just stopped in at the end thank you so so much please look forward to in two weeks i will be at the origami usa convention 2022 there's going to be live streams on the origami usa account there's going to be maybe a origami cafe related stuff register for the origami cafe early so you have the password to get in uh, make sure you're, you know, you're followed on all my accounts. I'm gonna be announcing things on the fly. Uh, I'll try to set up as much as I can, but we got giveaways. I'm gonna try to film as much. Yeah, we. I'm. A, I'm gonna be really busy at the convention, but it's gonna be a great time. Uh, I'm so excited, and hopefully I don't lose my voice. I think I'll be talking more than I ever have in like three years. So, should be a lot of fun. Um, hopefully my models get there safely, and. Be aware for that Samurai version 4 debut. Definitely blow up that Instagram post when it comes out. And yeah. But other than that, thank you guys so much. And I will see you later. Bye.